What up, guys? What up, universe? What up, Patreons? Uh, we are back, and I guess also here for the first time. <laughs> this is weird. Uh, but welcome back to the official reboot of Channel Chasers, uh, our TV related podcast where we talk all things TV related and have a bunch of different in depth TV show discussions with a bunch of random tangents mixed in there. Of course, uh, I am Jay, your host, and of course, joining me as always is my good buddy, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? Hello, people. First time you haven't referred to me as your self-proclaimed sidekick in a long time. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, you what? are technically, yeah, he is my self-proclaimed sidekick because he, he literally has proclaimed it on several occasions. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm cool with it. Nothing wrong. I mean, Robin, Robin's, I mean, Robins are a very important role, and they are a very underrated and underappreciated role. Yep. Indeed. And I mean, there's a whole team of sidekicks that we all know and love. Yep, yep, yep. But Who are actually featured in what we are talking about today, albeit briefly. Surprisingly. But yeah, so yeah, that what are we talking about today? Yeah, so that transitions us to what uh, our topic for this inaugural audio episode of Channel Chasers is, and that is, of course, Crisis on Infinite Earths, parts one through three. The first half. Yeah, parts one through three. So, yeah. of course, this My is bad. something we have all been hyping up for a long time, and Brian and I are probably the biggest champions of the Arrowverse on the entire universe team. Um, I know Ty fell off of it pretty hard. And, uh, you know, Craig is, uh, C-Dubs was a very uh, negatively minded towards it. I know Justin likes it. Justin is, you know, he's not as positive as we are, but he's also nowhere near as negative as Ty and C-Dubs were. Um, but uh, nevertheless, like that, we had initially planned to, you know, cover crisis stuff on the channel. Uh, but then, you know, the COPPA stuff happened, my channel shutdown happened. Um, and since, you know, uploading is going to be a little tricky for me, I figured, well, you know, why not try an audio version to see if uh, that works out? And that way I can still kind of contribute to the channel. Um, and, you know, still get to interact with you guys. Uh, so, yeah, this is something huge that has been building up all year, ever since the end of Elseworlds, and all throughout, like, the first half of, you know, a lot of the Arrowverse shows, or at least particularly Slash and Arrow. So, you know, it's something that's been hyped up for a very long time. Um, and, you know, uh, if you've been following my coverage on the channel... I've pretty much covered every single piece of crisis news as it came out um, with Brian covering like the, the later stuff. He, I know you've done a handful of videos on the channel as well on crisis. Yeah, news. Um, there was a time where, uh, where uh, back when channel chasers was still video format on the weeks that we didn't do it, I would do a nerdy newsies here and, Seems like every week we were getting a confirmation about some kind of news or rumors about who would show up. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, so to start off, uh, let's talk about some initial reactions to the first three parts. Uh, obviously, you know, you can find Brian's initial reviews on his channel, um, and you can find yep. my reviews of the first three parts on my Vlare channel. So definitely, you know, check those out. Uh, but um, I'll start off. Honestly, I am very happy with how they came out with it. I think it definitely has lived up to the hype so far. Um, they've done a lot of things that I did not actually expect them to be able to pull off. Um, that um, I'm, I am really excited to talk about when we get there. Um, but overall... I, I really like it. It's definitely very high stakes. The fan service is, you know, as always for this crossover, these crossovers, amazing. Um, I think the characters are handled really well. 
and definitely the characters that will be getting like future spotlights and later shows and whatnot are really like being showcased on why they are getting their own shows. Yeah. So like it's definitely doing its job and doing it well. And you can really tell that a lot of effort was put into this. And I mean, even characters that like, you know, I have like individually, you know, not said the most positive things about in this crossover, they have been handled so well that I'm just like, oh, my God. So hope exists. You can be ha- you can be done correctly. And, you know, I'll mm-hmm. specify the character when we get there. But I'm sure you guys know. Follow his you- flair and his yeah. now. Yeah, if you've seen my original YouTube channel and my Vlair and the Batwoman podcast, which that gave it away anyway, you know what character I'm talking about. Well, he gave away what show. Yeah. You know what character I'm talking about, though. Um, so, Brian, what are your initial like thoughts about and reactions to the first three parts of the crossover? Well, initially, when it started off... Um... I'm very reactionary and very very into hype and stuff, but as time has settled, I have realized that maybe the first third was a little slow. I, I, but... I agree. The first part was really slow, um, and like the more I watched, like after see after like kind of thinking about the first part and especially the ending of the first episode, did not like that. Um, but I get yeah, it, I, and I and I and I like it more than other people. But I do admit that it was slow. But other than that, I really liked it. The second part was really cool, and the third part, and I do like how each part felt like their show, but also this giant epic. Yeah, like that. That was awesome. Uh, Cause, like you know, in uh, like. I think they had a, they've had a hard time doing that with the other two. I think Invasion was really bad at that. Um and then Earth X was slightly better but kind of just a a tagline type thing still. Like, you know what I mean? Like the mm-hmm. Supergirl episode in, of Invasion was really involved. Um I mean of Earth X was really involved because obviously like evil Nazi Supergirl was there, but like other than that like, you know, it was kind of just like Oh yeah, we're doing and, this now. And in invi- and in the invasion crossover, because that was on Earth X. Um, mm-hmm. In the invasion crossover, they were in a tough spot because the invasion episode was the hundredth episode for Arrow. Yeah. So it just like everything halted for a minute for us to have this like VR anniversary yep. session thing. Yep, and then um, for the Elseworlds crossover, it was handled all right, but like for certain shows, it kind of just interrupted the plot for a second and was like, "Okay, we're doing this now." Mm-hmm. But this one, it felt like a cohesive story, but also felt like. And I think what helped it, especially yeah. for Flash and Arrow, is that like. You know, their stories in the main season have been building up to this in the first place. So it didn't feel like it was interrupting anything, you know? Yeah, and um, they also had uh, show specific guest stars that they could lean on. Yep. They chose the heavy hitters of each of the big shows, um, which I was very happy with. They were, because like, Obviously, you don't need to include whole teams, especially on teams as big as the Legends, um, because like we already have enough characters as it is, plus the cameos. Mm-hmm. So, like you know, obviously they only chose Sarah and Ray, which you know, fan favorites, OGs. Well, uh, then you had yeah, alternate timeline Mick, who is you know my personal favorite character. So I was glad Mick was here somehow. And then. Uh... I don't know if you want to get into it yet because it's kind of a spoiler, but the surprise cameo. Yeah, the yeah, surprise. that was yeah, that that was that was re- that was a really nice surprise because I was like, oh snap, is that? 
Are they gonna? Oh, it's just a okay. Still cool, but okay. And then it's also like, hey, did not expect that. That wasn't in any of the new speculation or rumors. Yeah, or anything. yeah, it wasn't even rumored that that person was like showing up. I was like, oh, that's thank you for giving us a nice surprise. Um, yeah. But yeah, so um, do you think that it lived up to the hype so far for these first three? I mean, nothing is infallible. Um, we live in a world where nothing's going to be perfect, but I thought it was still pretty damn enjoyable. And yeah, I was going to say, like, I, I, it's, it's, an, it's an Arrowverse crossover. Like, I'm not expecting it to be perfect. I'm not expecting it to be a showstopper. I mean, not to say that I've, like, lowered my expectations for Arrowverse stuff, because I think the Arrowverse can still do some great things. But, like, you know... I wasn't expecting it to be anything like super mind blowing. I just wanted some good fan service and some a fun plot, and it's definitely some good fan service and a fun plot. Yeah, because uh, this ties into the other show. But if you notice, there was a couple episodes this season of like some of the shows, especially uh, Supergirl and Flash, where they were light on their lead, and that was because. They were filming Crisis, yep. like the Lena backstory episode of... Which is a really good episode. Uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. Some, just side note, that's a really good episode. Um, as I was catching up on Supergirl, I saw that and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, um, indeed. But, uh, yeah. So, um, another thing that I like about this is, like, it's rewarding... So the, you know, if you watch all the shows, but you don't need to watch every single show to be able to like just watch Crisis, right? Like, yeah, my my like my dad tuned in because he's a big Superman fan, and he heard Tom Welling was coming back, so he was like, "All right, I'll watch it." So, and he's read the comics, so he knows what Crisis on Infinite Earth is because you know he read it when he was growing up, um, like the original one. So, like, he already knew the plot and the premise. He goes, okay, so it's anti-monitor, monitor, gathering the heroes, and then, like, at the end, they, um, well, he, and he goes, so at the end, they're going to probably merge it into one Earth or whatever. Okay, I, I remember this. He's like, wait, is this the, he's like, is this the one where the Flash and Supergirl die, or is this the one where, like, they, they separate into, like, the 52? He's like, no, I was like, no, 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 you're thinking, that one, that one is Infinite Crisis. Yeah, this, the, you're, the one you're thinking of is yeah, Crisis on Infinite Earths. There are a lot of crises on DC. DC loves to mm-hmm. use Crisis as one of their titles. Well, I mean, just look at the Arrowverse. The last crossover is called well, not the last, but the one before that was called Crisis on Earth X. Yeah. Um. So, um. What other non-spoilery stuff can we say? Uh, I think all the performances so far have been great. Um, um, you can really tell that like this is like a Mel Swan song because he is giving it his like a game all throughout his Indeed. performance. Like some really good payoff for like his particular like set of characters and character arc. Um, I love that and... how. I love how they play on his, like, self-doubt and how he kind of downplays his personal role within the multiverse, um, you know? Yeah, definitely. And also, uh, makes me also sad that Brendan Ralph is gonna be eventually leaving because yeah, he... But, yeah, he, yeah, he does really, he does really great in this, too. But also... Let's at least thank our lucky star that we got to see this man be Superman one more time because, you know, you and I have both said off camera, like in like the, our group chat and stuff. Um, but like he, he got robbed of the, of the chance to play Superman. Yeah. And he is one of the best actors to play that role. He has like the same natural charm and charisma that you would expect from a Superman actor. Um, yep. And he, he's got like just the skill to do it, man. Like, I feel like and if he was know, given a legit shot, he could really do a good Superman in a Superman movie. And you know what the thing is? 
is uh, Superman Returns was right around the time of um, was right around the time of uh, Batman Begins. Yeah, and you know who was you know who was up for the role of Bruce? Who? Henry Cavill. Oh shit! Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I and think now that we've seen better, him, yeah, he'd make a better Batman, in my opinion. I mean, not to say that he wasn't a good Superman, because he was a good Superman for like what he was given. But yeah, uh, like you were about to say, can you imagine a world where we would have the world's finest, where it's Ralph's, where it's um, Brendan Ralph's Superman and Cavell's Batman? I would, dude. That would that would be an awesome Earth. Uh, I'm betting you, like. Wherever that Earth is in the multiverse, they're very happy with themselves. Um, although they probably, although probably to balance out things, they probably have something even worse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pro- probably, probably, probably something like tanked out in the mar on the Marvel side. Um, you know, mm-hmm. just to even or the Spider Man never came home. Oh man, yeah, that's probably what happened. We never got Civil War. At least in the capacity that we got in this dimension. Uh, but yeah, so Ralph did great. It was awesome to see Kingdom Come Superman. Like that was amazing. That mm-hmm. like that costume just looks so good. And like the salt and pepper look for Ralph, like he really pulled it off. Um uh, I definitely like it. Um, like I said before, uh, just Lois. Every single word Lois says is just amazing. <laughs> like whoever writes the dialogue for Lois, I really hope you're writing for Lois and Clark, um, because that is just top notch. Like her and I mean Tyler hasn't really gotten to do much in the crossover, which I guess is a kind of complaint for me. But uh, Lois has been great. Hello. Yeah, she has. Oh, okay, I, I was I was, oh. I was just checking because like my th- my thing wasn't lighting up, so I wasn't sure if like I was reading I something. Be... Uh, okay, but, cool. But yeah, non related to this. But um, yeah, Lois is really good, and she's had time to shine. I've. Even like a moment that she has with it's just her and the monitor. Yeah. Uh, she's she's just really good. I like I said, like they're doing a really good job of selling why this like Superman show is not only needed but is going to be great. Like not to mm-hmm. go on too big of a tangent, but one of the things I've hated, like, in regards not particularly to this crossover, but is the fandom discourse within the Arrowverse because there are people that are like that you know leading up to Crisis were like talking like how much they were looking forward to Crisis and all that but then the second the Superman like the Lois and Clark show came out um people were instantly just crapping on it because it was going to be set in the like CW Arrowverse my my only issue when they announced it was, ah, oh crap, is this why Krypton was canceled? That's what I'm saying. That was my only thing. I was like, oh, that's why you canceled Krypton. Because you need more room to actually play with the Superman villains now that, like, Superman's getting the show. Although, I'm starting to think that the Adam Strange show is why Krypton might have been canceled. That show is still up in the air about what it is. Oh, yeah, true. Because um, we don't know if it's going to be an anthology or an Adam Strange show or what. But, yeah, back to Crisis, though. Um, now is where we are going to give the official spoiler warning. We are going to talk about spoilers for these first three parts. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you haven't seen them, uh, go watch them. What are you doing? It's great. Trust us. Like, if you are a fan of DC stuff in any, like, uh, shape, size, or fashion, like, you owe it to yourself to at least give this a shot. 
Indeed. Okay. So let's start off, obviously, from the beginning, because that's a very good place to start. Indeed. Uh, so uh, one of the first things I want to talk about with uh, part one, uh, and I know this is kind of jumping the gun a little bit. Um, I liked it. It's a, it's a slower part. Um, I, I loved some of the homages that they did, obviously, uh, with um, Argo City being blown up. And, of course, like Clark and Lois sending off Baby John in a rocket. Yeah, but if you want to talk, talk about starts, though, don't you think we should briefly mention the cameos? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, so it opens up with, like, an overlook of the multiverse, and we get to see a bunch of the different Earths. We get to see Earth-89, which is the Batman-89 universe. We get to see Earth-97. We get to see Earth-97. For 89, we got back, uh, not Keaton, but we got one of the original actors. Yeah, I think it was Gordon, right? Was that the Gordon? No. I forgot his name now, but it wasn't Gordon. Oh. I think it was supposed to be like their, their, uh, like one of the police officers. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and I, uh, one of my favorite cameos that we got in the uh, in the opening shot of the multiverse uh, was uh, on Earth sixty six. We got to see the Boy Wonder himself, Burt Ward, and he says, "Great crimson skies of death." Holy crimson skies of death. Yeah, and awesome. And also, if you notice, fun fact: not only is he wearing a sweater that is in Robin colors, but he's walking a dog of a certain species. Yep. So, Ace the Bat Hound. Maybe. Hopefully, please. Or given the timeline, maybe Ace's kid. Yeah, true. Um, let's see. And of course, like we alluded to in the intro, uh, we got to see like a brief glimpse of uh, the Titans. Which, fun fact, that wasn't actually Hawk because the actor wasn't so, it was not in Crisis, but that was actually Jason. Yeah, and it could have just been. It, it looks like maybe it could have been just footage that they took, like unused mm-hmm. footage, and yeah. just added a red aura to it, but the fact alone that they were able to do that, just that, gets some kudos from me. Oh, yep. and also, fun fact, even when we get to to Supergirl's Earth, Earth 38, the cameos don't stop. Because our first scene on Earth-38, I don't know if you noticed that, the protester. I could, I, did, I mean, he looked familiar. That was Will Wheaton. Oh, shoot. Mm-hmm. Wesley. Slash um, awful lad on Teen Titans. Sla- slash, like, geek icon. Yep. Will Wheaton. Yep. Yep. But I find it so so funny that they got him to be the protester who's like, the end times is coming. Not even Supergirl can save us. (laughs) And he was right. And and the funny thing is is the character and we then get another uh, surprising character cameo. Uh, what was his name again? Buddy? Fluffy? Oh, Bippa, uh, oh, oh, oh yeah, Fluffy, the, the dragon. Yeah, that confused me at first, because I, com- I completely forgot about that. Because I'm, like, I remember when that started, and I was like, is that a fucking dragon? <laughs> did, yeah. did, I was like, did we step into Game of Thrones? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. There was an alien that shapeshifts into a dragon that the little al- the little girl has a pet. Oh, yeah. Which, right. even when that episode, the first, the episode where Fluffy first came in, people were talking about, Kara calmly talked to a dragon. Is Kara the mother of dragons? 
And you know, you know, like that was the, the that was the first cue to uh, like that, like the CW got to flex their budget muscles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Opening shot, motherfucking dragon. Take that, legends. Mm-hmm. Oh, I expect the legends episode to be insane. I know, but still, um, yeah, uh, that that was really fun. Uh, so yeah, let's. Let's talk about it now. Uh, so, uh, we get like the crew roundup, and like right off bat, Kate and uh, Kate and Kara have like amazing chemistry still. Well, well, yeah, it, it's like Kate even like opening move punches Harbinger. Yep, and it's just like he's not having any of this. Which, by the way, just real quick, I love that line from Brainy. Because she's like, the rabbit was just about to talk. And it's like, this lady converses with the rabbits? <laughs> I, I love that. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, uh, like, and I also love that, like, uh, you know, Kate is, like, in the middle of some really dark shit. <laughs> Like, if you've been yeah. paying attention to Batwoman. And so, like, she's on edge. So, like, that reaction makes perfect sense. Yeah, but then Kara starts talking to her, and she immediately relaxes, and she's like, oh, yeah, if if this is about to go down, then you all should know. Boom, I'm Kate. <laughs> Just like, yep. that's really cool. Yep. But still, um, this is more talking about the further, but even in the beginning and going on, you can still tell Kate's naivete and all of this big giant stuff that's happening. Yep. Oh, but uh, it's it's not it's not it's nowhere near as funny as Ralph. Uh, we'll get to that when we can talk about part two. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. Oh, what was I gonna say? Um, this one in particular, I, it does a lot of the setup for Arrow and like. You know, uh, Ollie basically kind of saying his goodbyes and stuff. One of my absolute favorite moments. Like, and I, I, I screamed at my TV when this happened. He goes, I've got a little something for you. And I was like, he made her a costume. He made her a costume. Oh, there it is. He made her a costume. Yep. That was such a good moment. Uh, seeing Cat in full costume. Matching costume, well, might I add. Um, and also, might I add, uh, Kate McNamara, her acting is just, especially facially. Yeah, see, a lot of people, com- see, a lot of people have been complaining about me of this season, but I don't know, Kat's, Kat's great, and that's not just, you know, bias from me already liking her from Shadowhunters. Uh, I just think she did, she's done a really good job, I think. Yeah, I, I like her facial acting a lot, because... It's just like when he first gives her the suit, you can see it on her face. She's like, what the fuck? Right? She's like, I hope this is meant for you. He's like, I don't think it'll fit. And then he just leaves her and they allow her to have like just a brief second alone with the suit where she's just like, is this really real? Yep. It's it's pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um. I I also love like Sarah interacting with Dad Oliver, <laughs> and mm-hmm. her 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 really liking his like she's like you know we we've come a long way haven't we like from sneaking off to have an affair on your dad's boat to me being the captain of a spaceship and you being a dad yeah she's like I've seen I've seen Playboy Oliver I've seen. Vigilante Oliver. I've seen Murderer Oliver. <laughs> yeah. It's weird to see Dad Oliver, but it suits you. And I like yeah. his response. He's like, yeah, it is weird. Yeah, he's like, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is definitely. Yeah. But they're cool. Yeah, I, I, I like it. Um, because again, it just it brings a lot of closure. Because uh, you kind of forget that like Sarah was the person he really started his journey with. So like, 
and not only that, but um, Sarah was the original person that he like was on again, off again with. And honestly, like, I would have been if if Alisney didn't end up working out, I would have totally been Sarah is the only person I would have been fine with him getting together with. Yeah, personally, that was the that was the thing is uh, they noticed that. Um, well, first of all, Katie Cassidy they screwed up multiple times, but no offense to her. And Steven, yeah, they didn't have the they didn't have yeah, chemistry. Yeah, they didn't have good romantic chemistry. They had better friend and, chemistry. But and then Katie, they noticed. yeah, yeah, Katie, then they yeah, noticed. Katie Lots and Stephen Amell definitely did. Yeah, but they also noticed that this little one-off character that they were only meant to be like in one episode, one done, had a lot of chemistry with. Oliver and fans loved it, so Felicity was born, and then Felicity, and yep. that snowballed. Yep, and which, then which, sometimes you have to go with the flow. When the actors don't have the chemistry, you've got to adapt. Like with Friends, she was supposed to end up with Joey, not Chandler, but they realized yeah. that the chemistry. And then also, Ant Man wasn't supposed to be, have such a big role, but they realized the chemistry. You know, it's a pattern here. <coughs> that <Yeah>. woman. <laughs> it's definitely like that. <laughs> it's def. It's definitely a lot like that. And I, like, like I said, like Sarah, Sarah, it was just good to see Oliver and Sarah interact again. It's mm-hmm. like because. Like, not only is their chemistry great, but, like, their friendship is also great. Like, I love that, like, you know, they stopped, uh, you know, they weren't together anymore, but now they're just really, really good friends, you know? Mm-hmm. Which, is, it's so cool, because for some reason, those two are just really good at sliding, like, sliding from being in a relationship to being vigilante buddies to being yeah. friends with benefits to just being normal friends. Yep. I mean, let's be real. So, if we took Oliver from season one and put him on the Legends team, or season two, like, let's go with season two at least, he would probably fuck his way through history, too. Yeah, to be fair. I mean, that season I didn't realize until I went back and saw it, but he had a lot of women. Yeah, man. He he was running through all. Yeah, he he had a like uh, revolving, revolving door. Mm-hmm. All of them, including one that shall not be named. That I'm glad Crisis erased, or Crisis didn't and erase one, her. But you know, and one that I wish had a bigger role in the universe as a. But and I was, I was, I was, I was really excited when they said that the, you know, the other version of this character that I actually liked was going to be there, but we only got to see her get, we only got to see her get wiped, which kind of sucks, personally. But we did get to see her run in costume, so. Yeah, true. But, but yeah, Casey didn't know. I was talking about McKenna. Yeah, yeah, uh, McKenna was awesome. I liked her a lot. I was I was hoping she she was honestly and not just because I think she was one of the hottest love interests that Oliver had, but also I just liked her story. Yeah, because I think and I liked the whole kind of dichotomy that they had. It was almost yeah. kind of weirdly like a reverse Batman Catwoman. Yeah, but yeah, where but where Catwoman is like law abiding and yeah, yeah, Oliver's like the and the hero is the lawbreaker. Yeah, I, I I really like that dynamic. It was really it was really cool, um, but uh, yeah. So what was I gonna say? Um, what also what else do we want to address part uh with part one? Um, um, I can tell you that a lot of people were. It was interesting how they uh, how they did the whole. Argo City, like, psych-out thing with Clark and Lois. Where 
they just only had one pod because apparently Kryptonians only believe in having one pod. <laughs> right. And so they did like they mimicked like how Clark's parents sent him out and so he sends out Jonathan and then you think well what the hell I know he's in the promos yeah like I've seen him in all the promo stuff and it's like oh he got he literal got, deus ex machina yep he Lima. got teleported he got teleported by a harbinger slash the, the monitor gotcha yes yeah, no, because th- that's what freaked me out at first. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> they did not just kill Superman. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. Um, but obviously, killing Argo, I-, I think, is a setup for um, uh, the-, the Lois and Clark show taking place on Earth. Indeed. Because so, I hate to say it, yeah. but I don't think Argo's coming back. Argo's definitely not coming back because and I, I knew this was going to happen because it's a whole planet full of Kryptonians. Yeah. They can never have more than two and, full-blooded Kryptonians. And a uh, fun fact for you, in case you didn't know, it was confirmed that uh, in uh, what season are they on right now? Five? Five. Supergirl? Yep. In season 5B, Erica Durant is confirmed for a multi-episode story, but okay. not as not as Kara's mom. What, a Smallville Lois or or wait no after I believe it was confirmed that it it's Smallville Lois. Oh, as Smallville Lois? Oh shit! And that they're giving her a story post crisis. Oh shit! I could be wrong. Cool. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, which is anything- cool though because. <laughs> Because we can talk about it in another part, but she was in it even less than Tom was. Yeah, right? She was in there for like half a second. Um, Is there anything else we want to address uh, for part one before we talk about the ending? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so it was cool to see, before we talk about the ending, it was cool to see all of them like fight together for... Some of yep. them for the first time. Yeah. Those sweeping shots as they were fighting. Yeah. They, they, basically they did the, the mentors. They, they did the they did the classic Avengers circle shot, which everybody loves. No one can deny that. As they were fighting pseudo dementors. Yep. They're basically the yeah, I just called them dementors. Cause I was like, yo, somebody just needs to cast a Patronus. Somebody calls Zatanna up. Zatanna is in the multiverse. Have and I gotta tell, and I gotta tell you, they kind of introduced one dynamic that I hope keeps returning, at least until he like has to leave. Ray and and that is Ray and Kate. Yeah, Ray and Kate was great. So, um, as I said, uh, you know, if you've been following me on the Batwoman podcast, which if not, you should. It's been a lot of fun. Um. You know, Mimi, Rachel, and I, we constantly, constantly are hard on Kate with how, like, how horrible (laughs) she kind of is at her job and how, um, like, you know, her fight skills need to improve. But, like, she was killing it out there. And, like, when her and Ray teamed up and, like, you know, he helped her with the batarang trick, I was like, (gasps) finally, she hit something with that. I also like how at the beginning... He's talking, and she's like, does your friend always talk this much? And he's like, yeah, you get used to it. It's like, yep. Ray, shut up. I love I love Kara. She's like, Ray, can you get to the point, please? Yeah. And then he's like, that suit, it's so awesome. And he's like, do you want to keep your hand? It's like, I'm very much... No, how attached are you to your... Yeah, how attached are you to that hand? Yeah, that was funny. 
Um, and he's like, very much so. Very much then, so. Thank you. And then, and then I like it though, because at the end when they're like overrun, she's like, "I'll take that upgrade now," and he geeks out and gives it to her. But then when she finally uses it, she's like, "Hey, it was she's awesome." Like, she's like, "This is pretty awesome." Okay, because because not only did not only did he upgrade her batarang so it could hit three of the Dementor things, but then it came back to her. Yep. yep. Yep, that was cool, which, you know, she's had trouble with in the show. So, finally. Mm-hmm. Um, so, that was some nice payoff if you've been watching Batwoman. Um, but, uh, yeah, now let's talk about the ending. So, all right. So, at first, I was kind of hyped about this, and I liked it because I felt like it was fitting. And But the more I thought about it, the more I thought it was kind of dirty. <laughs> Um, so if you got, I mean, obviously we're in the spoiler section. Um, yeah, so, so uh, after this epic fight, Monitor's like... He starts Monitor's teleporting. Like, pull, yeah, he starts teleporting. He's like, this out. is useless. This world is doomed. And so he starts eating everyone off the yep. planet. And then it gets down what? to Oliver and he goes, he goes, all right, Oliver, it's time. He goes, is everyone evacuated from the, um, is everybody on the ships yet? He goes, no, then it's not time. And he just goes around. He's... No, he doesn't just go around. This is a point that I actually do like that shows Oliver's stubbornness, but also his heroicness. He legit fires an arrow at the monitor. Yeah, he disables. And... Yeah, he disables the monitor, to, to, so that he oh. can still, so he can still keep fighting. Yep, I, and, and I love that. And still, even though I do agree, it was kind of dirty. Going back to facial acting, I do like it when Oliver ran out of arrows and he's like, well, shit, this is the time. Yep. And he's like, this is it. And he just Oliver. facially shows it and drops the arrows and he's like, ah! Like, yep. I love that. Um, I'm going to go punch me some tomatoes. But I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and it was funny. Like, in, in our group chat, I was like, Oliver, cast your Patronus. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but um, the reason I think it's dirty, and the reason I thought it was dirty, was because he is your flagship founder star, and I understand you're trying to justify the credibility of the threat, raise the stakes. It all makes sense. It's all very fitting. He went out like a G. But this was the first episode, and my man didn't even get to die in his own show. He didn't even get to... He barely got to die on his own Earth. That's what I'm saying. That, that, I, that's why I'm still a little salty about it. Like, I accept it, but it was a little dirty. It's a little dirty. It was. It, it was a little. But, but yeah. I still... I still... I still like it though. Uh, I will oh, yeah. admit that it was. It has and... the it has the right effect and the right impact. It's just I think I, I'm I'm taking it especially hard because you know Oliver and Arrow definitely like mean a lot to me personally. Uh, I get you, and I also think that it was kind of dirty that um, Mia was the only Arrow character who got to witness it. Yeah, John wasn't there, and he and he and like, and I was glad they addressed that, and he was justifiably really fucking pissed. Well, well, yeah, I guess we can transition now to yeah, part that, two. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that transitions us into part two. And I like how he's like, I, you can't tell me that I'm losing my best friend and my wife all at yep. once. Yep. And I, I love that he Without goes me not even being there. And I love that he goes right to Sarah and he's like, you let this happen? Are you fucking serious? Yeah, which... Which, honestly, though, she had, if he had let her explain, maybe it would... Because she didn't have a chance. Well, I, I Monitor know, I just know, I know. She asked yeeted that. her away. Yep. I know she would have stayed. But still, like... <laughs> Uh, like I, I'm glad he yeah. got to vent that out though, like because like, but yeah, that was real dirty. That John wasn't even there. Like John should have been there. And and John Diggle, a 
a straight up human went toe to toe and got pissed at the monitor. And he didn't flinch. He did not back down one inch, man. Like no, the man has like Kryptonian level testicles. And uh, this is where our uh, fourth legend got to show up. Yep, Mick Rory slash and his well, partner third. in crime. Yeah, his part and his I was gonna say and his partner in crime, his ship. Leonard. Yeah. Voiced by Wentworth. Which was and, awesome. I loved that. That and, was a nice. And surprise. I also realized and I also realized why they did that like out of story. I realized why they did that. Why? So they wouldn't have to pay the actress who voices Gideon. Oh yeah. And they wouldn't have to explain why Gideon is there, but the rest of the legends aren't. Also, this introduces a really cute dynamic uh, in part two, um, where Mick Rory has his designated role for the crossover as Uncle Rory, babysitter extraordinaire. Well, it... And it's funny, though, because they first go to kids like, hell no. It's one. Of, it's one of the. Fu- it's one of the funniest little jokes that they have because it's like you know the monitor is giving his epic sp- exposition speech, <laughs> and little John is ah, ah. so Lois is holding it. It's like passes, passes the whole entire world is that. Ah, ah, ah. Passes him to Clark. The multiverse is doomed. Ah, ah. <laughs> passes to Kara. He, he tries again, ah, ah. and right next to Kara is uh, Kate. 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 Kate, pa- Kate directly passes it to Kate Mick. Is like, nope. And Mick is just like, hey there, little fella. And he just quiets Mick down. Like, yeah, Mick is just like, eh, screw it, why not? This is happening now. <laughs> You're telling me I get to hold a super baby? Okay, <laughs> I'll hold a super. But... But then not only does he get the hold of the Super Baby, but later in the episode, he reads his own smut. Yeah, to the Super okay. Baby. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite parts. That's a, so, like, yeah, this is, this is just a random little scene. Like, he's, he's sitting there with Baby John in one arm and his book in the other hand, and he's like, he, uh, he pounces on Harima with the strength of a tiger. Oh, you like that, don't you? Yeah, some of my best work. <laughs> Because John and giggles. Ray's, Ray's just like, I don't think your erotica. He, the baby. <laughs> he goes, I don't think your erotica, your extraterrestrial erotica, is appropriate for children. What are you talking about, haircut? This is all ages. It's like the little kid loves it, and he just walks <laughs> off reading it. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, uh... it, it was almost like it was almost like they included Mick just to be the super babysitter for the episode. Pretty much, and he he's the super babysitter all throughout because even in like passing, Lois is like, "Well, I can help because other Rory has uh, John right now." Hmm. Which, so... by the way, that was the other legend that I was referring to who got to show up. Yep. Constantine. Yep, Constantine. <laughs> um, so Constantine. So let's talk about that. That was in part two. Okay. So I love this. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. The pun was a little way too on the nose. But when they got to Earth six six six, and we saw my boy. That was part three. Oh, that was part three. Oops. Part part two was just. Yeah, John showing up to help retrieve Oliver's soul. Yeah. The Lazarus Pit. Yep, yep, yep. Which had a surprise cameo of not a legend, but a legend-related character. Yeah, Jonah. That was cool. Yep. Which, uh... This is a different universe, but apparently now in this universe... John Scar, I mean, not John, Jonah Scar was caused by Sarah. Yeah, which is fun. That? 
Yeah, yeah, because she said, oh, you don't have the scar in this universe. Well, you're about to. She was like, you were going to get it anyway. Yep. So that was fun. Yeah, so Um, uh, just real quick, though, address mm -hmm. the fact that in an alternate universe, Jonah Hex is the guardian of a Lazarus pit. Yeah, that yeah, that's pretty interesting. So the main meat pota- meat and potatoes of part two is uh, we find out like what they need to do, like they need to get the paragons of different like you know aspects, you know, earth, wind, fire, water, and heart. We've got we've got the paragon of uh, hope, which is Kara. We got the paragon of destiny, of which is Sarah. Which is Sarah. And now they need to find the the paragon of courage, who is the bat from the future. The bat of the future. Of the future. And, and then they and, and then they need to find the paragon of truth, who is a Kryptonian who has suffered a loss. No yeah, more loss. Yeah, could. more more loss than any mortal could ever endure. Um, so obviously, paragon of truth is pretty obvious. Oh, is you know, pretty self-explanatory because we've seen the promos, we've seen the suit, we knew who it was well, going to be. Also, well, also, I like it. That just to sh- goes to show like how awesome and how humble he is. Uh, Tyler Superman is like, that's clearly not me, but I yeah. will gladly find him. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. That was a nice show of character of Superman. He didn't just step up like, oh yeah, it's definitely me. You know. I'm definitely the Paragon, because I'm Superman. Like, yeah, he definitely he was aware. He's like, no, nah, def- that doesn't match me. Um, yeah, and- but him and his wife and another journalist go off to find him. I love that, by the way. Like, team journalism. They're all journalists, if mm-hmm. you think about it. Because Clark mm-hmm. is a journalist. They got, you know, of course, Lois. And, of, of course, like, Iris. Who's finally doing her mm-hmm. job? <laughs> you see, people? Yep. I don't hate Iris. I just hated that Iris was doing the wrong job. Can we can we also just take a brief moment to mention that like this is the most work and best we've seen of Iris in a crossover? She's been doing phenomenally, like straight up. Good job, Candace. Like you have Indeed. really like stood out. Like you're not just a girlfriend or a wife, you know. You pull you're 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 putting in real work. So Indeed. Um and you know, obviously things can't go smoothly because it's a crossover. So of course we um around this time we get the introduction to uh, one of our uh, roadblocks, which is, of course, in the form of uh, everybody's favorite bald man. Well, uh, one of ours. Yep. Well, I mean, the at, least, we... at, at least the Arrowverse's favorite bald man. Evil bald man. Yeah, the one that we love to hate. Yep. Lex Luthor is back, and he does the most Lex Luthor thing possible. <laughs> He steals the Book of Destiny and he's going around the multiverse killing Superman because, of course, he would. And so he's trying to beat them to the punch. However, along the way, we make a stop at a certain Earth on a certain farm. And Mm -hmm. in that very moment, my inner seven-year-old self was doing jumping jacks. Oh, well, uh, first of all, we have to briefly mention that they went to one Earth to find, and Lex had already gotten there. Yep. Which was a good nod to the death of Superman. Yeah, because it, 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 it was the same pose and everything. I like that. Which was weird, though, because that was, uh, what's her name? Uh... Earth thirty Lois. Yeah, it was uh, it was uh, it was Terry Hatcher in that one, right? No, it was Earth thirty eight Lois. Oh, it was, oh, it was Earth thirty eight Lois. Oh, I thought that was Terry Hatcher. And they it was off. it was the same actress 
oh, as 38 Lois. For some, for but some reason, it, it wasn't. That, for some reason, I wasn't... thought they killed off Dean Cain. No, <laughs> they they're not bringing back Dean Cain, not anytime soon. Thanks to his oh. IRL stuff. Yeah, I know. I, th- that's why I thought they killed him off was because of his IRL stuff. Well, then they they'd have to bring him in for that quick cameo. Yeah, true. Give him money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, Fair enough. But but yeah, they had it was weird because I took notice of it because it was uh, Earth thirty eight Lois's actress, but the Superman wasn't Tyler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was a little weird, but mm-hmm. then they go to Earth. Uh, what? What did they say the number was? I don't, I don't remember what it was. I want to. I I really wish I had wrote that down. But the Smallville. Well, we see a very, we see a very familiar farm. Yep, and I'm not gonna lie. I wanted them to play the theme again just one more time because I love it so much. It's iconic, but they didn't. Oh, uh, and I love. We see I love, this big buff love, dude in flannel. I love. I love the reaction though. Because as soon as they land, she go, uh, they're like, um, they're like that can't be Clark Kent. And then, she, and then Lois, of course, being Lois, she goes, that's definitely Clark Kent. Or he, that could be the guy on the cover, unless that's the guy on the, co- uh, on the cover of the paper towels. Yeah. And I, and I love it, though, because Iris, Iris, who's clearly been doing this uh, not as long as Lois, Comes in and she's like very timid about it, and then Lois is like, "Are you Clark Kent?" No, no. She goes, "Lex is try- Lex Luthor's gonna kill you." Yeah. Oh uh, no, I I, mean, uh, I love it because like uh, you know it opens up with uh, like Clark being like uh, like Tyler Clark being like I could do that with one hand, and he goes, "Well, <laughs> me, uh, that's good for you, but me, I need this axe now. Who are you exactly?" And the Iris comes up. She goes. Well, um, Mr. Kent, we, this is kind of hard to explain. Iris kind of, like, uh, Lois literally just pushes her aside. She goes, Clark, Lex is trying to kill you. And I love this because this is a nod to not only the end of Smallville, but also the season 11 comics. He goes, oh, the president's in town? Why did nobody tell me? I didn't know the president was in town. Yeah. And this look on their face, like, what the fuck? But before they can say anything else, he shows up. They get zapped away. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He get, they get zapped away by Lex, and then Lex shows up, and he goes, uh, he goes, "Hello, who the hell old are friend." You? Yeah, he goes, "Hello, old friend." He goes, and then like Clark goes, "Who the hell are you?" With a face like the fuck, you're not Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah, and and he goes, "Don't you recognize me, Clark? I'm Lex Luthor." And this leads to one of my favorite exchanges in all of the crossover. So, if you are unaware of the Smallville comics, at the end of Season 11, Clark uses gold kryptonite and gets rid of his powers to live a normal life because he realizes now that the Justice League is fully built and they have enough heroes around, they don't need him. And Kara, he's already trained Kara enough that Kara has taken his place as the super person. And he's got two little bundles of joy at home that he needs yep. to hear of. Yep. Uh, which they reference as well. Um, and so it, it, it leads to a, a short but super satisfying scene. Like Lex is feeling all confident and all like hot shit. He pulls out the kryptonite. Clark is like, oh, kryptonite. Cool. Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> and he goes, that was... what the? He goes, what? That was kryptonite. That was kryptonite. He goes, yeah, that probably would have hurt. But, um, yeah. Um, and he goes, yeah, that probably would have hurt if I still had my powers. And Lex and... is like, What? You don't have your powers. Why would you do that? And he steps he goes, forward and yeah, he goes. Why would you do that? And he starts listing his powers. He goes, "You had super strength, super speed. You could see through walls. You were a god." And he goes, "Why would you give that up?" And then he steps forward, 
And here's the crunch. So lifts his foot, and it's a little toy truck. Yep. And he goes, I'm just a farmer. Punches him right in the face. Well, no, because he he he's like, I'm just a farmer, and Lex tries to go after him. Like Lex tries to punch him. He's like, but I'm still stronger than you. And catches no. it. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he goes... Yeah, he tries to punch him. Clark catches it. He goes, huh, still stronger. Boom. Yeah. And then, and then there's our, like, Le- three-second cameo of Lois. <laughs> well, then Lex is like, this isn't even worth it anymore. And leaves. Ha- have fun with your have have fun with your fleeting existence. How much ever time you have left. And then Lo- and then brief cameo of Lois comes in. Yep. And she's like, the girls have something to show you. And then he goes, she goes, Who are you talking to? And he goes, Lex Luthor from another earth. And one this I love Erica Durantis Lois because Well he sa- he says Lex Luthor from another earth who was telling me that all the multiverse is dying. Yep, yep. And this is why I love Erica Durant Lois. Like, her just, like, no fucks given attitude is one of my favorite interpretations of Lois. She goes, ha! Smallville! You made it funny! It took you about a decade, but you made it funny! You're getting there. Loved it. And I love that she still calls him Smallville. <sighs> Um, one of my, still one of my favorite ships of all time is Smallville Lois yeah. Clark. It was also um, it was also in this uh, crossover though that we did find out that uh, Jesus, I need to Google her name because I want to get it right. Uh, what is her name? Um, who are you talking about? The chick that oh uh Betsy Tullock the thirty eight Lois. Uh-huh. Uh she she actually sometimes calls Clark Kansas. Yep. We I mean, that out in this crossover. She calls him she calls him Kansas. She doesn't call him Smallville, which I, I, I wish he had called him Smallville. But she calls him Kansas, so it's close yeah, enough. It's close, but, you know, Smallville's what, what I was missing. Um, but Smallville's yeah. kind of like their thing. Yeah. I know, I mean, it's a general comics thing. She calls him Smallville in the comics, too. Oh. Like, it, that's been the constant thing. She calls him Smallville because as soon as she, as soon as, when he first shows up at the Daily Planet and all the origin stories, he talks about how, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just from, he's like, where are you from? Oh, from Smallville. And she's like, you're from a pla- you're you're literally a small town boy from a town called Smallville. That's a place. And she goes, that couldn't have fit that couldn't fit anyone better, Smallville. And so that's why she calls him Smallville all throughout. Because like he has such an unassuming mm-hmm. personality. Um But but anyway The all the Loises and Clark stuff was awesome. Yep. But um, then we get back to the actual plot where they run in to another another Clark Kent. Yep, which is the who, uh, this Kingdom time, Come version, but like it's an altered version of Kingdom Come. He's running the Daily Planet. He's taking Perry's place. Yep. Um. So this version of Kingdom Come is actually more akin to like Injustice, honestly. Yep. Um, it's kind of it's kind of like if you merge injustice with the Superman Returns universe. Yeah, basically, it's injustice and the Superman Returns universe like mesh into one. So essentially, in the Superman Returns universe, at some point, um, the Joker uh, gets fed up with the fact that um, the Daily Planet doesn't cover him enough, and so he gasses the entire place killing you know most of the major staff of the planet and uh but also several civilian civilians including clark and lois's son jason who we met in superman well, J- returns i don't know did we confirm yeah, we did. that jason was a death 
He said, and my son Jason. Um, no, he, looks just he like, said he looks he just like that, my son Jason. And like, yeah. uh, if you if you pause it, the name um, his name is in the memorial. Really. Mm-hmm. Shit. I mean, but yeah. but yeah, it's just like after he tells this, Lois is like, "Yup, it's almost like you've endured no." A loss no mortal loss. could, you know, no mortal man yeah. could, you know, endure. Yep. And so, like, Lois, being Lois, inspires Clark to don the costume again. But, of course, well, it can't be that easy. He's like, he's like, which I love this moment. Because this just goes to show how good of Clark's both of them are. Um, He's like, okay, but first gotta deal with Lex. And he Change his costume. And then Tyler's like, if you're going to do that, he changes costume. You're not going to do it alone. It's one. And I, I also just love the interact, like the first interaction. Cause of course, like when Lois comes into the daily planet, she feels at home and she's just walking around. And of course, in classic Lois fashion, she bumps into Clark and she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and it's like, huh. You look really familiar. And this is like one of the only times. In this, in so far of any time we are seeing him, where I've seen Tyler's Clark get a little jealous. Because mm-hmm. he's like, ahem. Yep. And of course, you know, it can't be all that easy. Lex tries to come in and we get Superman v Superman, which was awesome. Because he, um, he's like, you know, I never thought I'd say this, but... Seeing a Superman, this seeing Superman die has been getting boring. Yeah, getting a little boring. So you know what's more fun than killing a Superman? Watching a Superman kill a Superman. Watching a Superman kill a Superman. Yep. And then you see the look of murder on Kingdom Come Superman's face. Yep. And, of course, Lois snaps him out of it because she's Lois. And yeah. they they manage to get back with him. And I love everybody's reaction to this because, like, Ray's mind is blown. <laughs> yeah. Ray's mind is blown. And Kara is probably my favorite reaction. She goes, holy crap, Ray, you got jacked. And she's, like, actually legit turned on. <laughs> Yeah, she's like she's starting to she's starting to compliment like she's like looking him up and down like mm, damn right you got Jack and then yeah Tyler's like um you might want to calm that down a little bit she goes why he's your cousin well sort of yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was a I'm telling you that was a shout out. To all of the people who posted those articles when Melissa got married, Supergirl finds her Superman. Oh, <laughs> that was so stupid. <laughs> Y'all need to read the comics at least a little bit. <laughs> and then gross. all the people, then, then the couple people that actually, like this last Halloween, dressed up as Superman and Supergirl as like a... A couple's a costume? costume? That's disgusting, bro. I didn't know you were going to a Halloween party in Alabama. It's the... Do Clark and Lois, or do... Hell, even though I wasn't the biggest fan of it, do Car and mon Or... Or... Superman and Wonder Woman. Yeah. Come but anyway, on. Anyway, that aside... That was hilarious. Love mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what was I going to say? So, next up, uh, we go to Earth-99. Well, meanwhile, while they're doing that... Yeah. We go to Earth-99. Cara and Kate. Which, I, I it, you know, it's cool that, you know, this was Earth-99, because, you know, you know what came out in 1999. Mm-hmm. A little old show that, you know, not many people remember. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Well, not that one. 
but the sequel to that one came out. They in still used the same theme song, didn't they? No, it's a different theme song. It's dun, 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 dun. it's like a really? dun, dun. you know, it's a, it's a techno type thing. Yeah, it's a completely I get different my theme bad. Song. Anyway, yeah, yeah, Batman it is a beyond. Good, it, yeah. The same year, oh, the Batman was... Beyond. Oh, I was thinking of just like my bad. No, Batman Beyond. Same year, Batman Beyond came out. Nice. Which is why this is the one that's set in the future timeline. Yeah, indeed. And um, there is no Terry in this universe. No, but there's but... a pretty badass looking Luke. <laughs> yeah, which I think. I think especially after listening to what Mark G has said, I think that's hinting at Luke going full on Batwing. I mean, we know that's going to happen eventually, so it was nice to see that. Yeah, and uh, and hopefully it doesn't no offense to the actor or anything, but hopefully it's done better than Mr. Terrific. Yeah. For real, because right now uh, on Batwoman, he is just kind of straight Curtis. Yeah, and even when Curtis does get his powers, he's well, he never gets powers. Yep, he just gets a he's just kind of in a background role, but yeah, no, I, I thought it was really cool. And of course, this is one like a cameo that fans have been waiting for because the voice of our childhoods, you know, vengeance. The knight himself, Kevin and Conroy, they, steps they up. They did that on. They did that move on purpose. Where yep. we don't see him first, we hear him. Yep. He says, "Luke, don't be so mad to our guests." Yep. And we hear uh, rank, rank. Yep. And. The- and here he comes, and we see him in the flesh. And, of course, his first reaction is, Kate? Bruce? Yep. And, uh, we don't see him in suit, but he is in a suit. Yep, which is pretty much kind of like a Darth Vader type of situation. Uh, cause, yeah, like, he, he, it, needs it, he needs it to survive, basically. Yep. Uh, and we'll get into why in a second because we find out and like um, you know, so obviously Kara just goes off doing her investigative journalism thing because and you know, she's nosy and talking with Luke. Yep. While the cousin this version of time. Luke, which by the way, that was funny when they first saw him because Kara's like turned on and then. It's like not gonna even go there. She goes. She goes. At least he was cute. And he goes. Please no. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, like, man. Uh, Kara. Kara's been real thirsty this crossover. Indeed. Kara's been real thirsty this crossover. <laughs> I mean, she was checking out her own cousin for God's sakes. Um, Which, by the way, just quick side note. Uh, in part two, can we get a, can we maybe get a cameo from Ray's cousin, played by Melissa? Right. Because yeah, that was mentioned in one of the crossovers before. She looks just like my cousin. Yeah. So uh, that was cool. Um. But, yeah, um, so we find out that, like, this isn't our Bruce. We find out real quick this isn't our Bruce just because he's voiced by our Batman. <laughs> this guy is a piece of shit. And and uh, he shows her a news article that says the menace of Batman yep. has been stopped. And it's just like, he's like, yeah, I was a menace. Yep. And he, you know, he did, 
He did the unthinkable. He broke his one rule, and he proved himself right. He knew once it happened one time, it was going to get way too easy to keep doing it. And he kept doing it. And meanwhile, as you know, Luke is showing Kara around, he shows Kara the trophy room. <laughs> And we see and a lot. This of... isn't this isn't like uh yeah, typical this is, Batman. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, this isn't anything cool. This isn't a trophy room with like the giant penny and the giant dinosaur. No. We see Deathstroke swords here. We see a bloody playing card. And most importantly, the first thing Kara, you know, catches a glimpse of is a shattered pair of glasses. Yep. And as soon as she sees that, she's like, holy shit. She's like, what are those there for? What? What is that? And, and then Luke, Luke beams with pride. He's like, oh, those. That's the best one. Those belong to Superman. Or at least they did. His alter ego, I guess. And she's like, he killed Superman? And I I love this because it also kind of confirms, like, how, because because of how shocked she is, this also kind of confirms to me at least. Like, I mean, they don't outright go and say it, but this proves to me that Clark and Bruce on her Earth are best friends. Yeah. Because like she's like, wait, Bruce killed Superman. Like, she can't believe that. Not because, like, Superman's dead, but because it was Bruce that did it. Like, you can tell, like, that's specifically how she's, like, yeah, that and, line. Uh, and Luke's response is, how do you think he got the suit? Yep. Who do you think put him in that? Yep. And then that's when, like, Kara burst in, he goes, and she's just like, he's not our guy. He killed Superman, and then he. Goes oh, on the she whole... doesn't just burst in; she bursts in full costume. Yep. And Ready to on... tear down. And he goes on a fucking a whole tirade about how you know what if the worlds are ending, maybe that's for the best. And then you know, Kate basically is just like, "Okay, Boomer, we're out of here." Well, um, well, Kara gets aggressive with him, and. He legit punches her, and she goes flying, and we see the suit glow green, and he's like, just in case. Yep. And then we see him try to fight Kate. And I love it, though, because he goes down, and he starts, like, electrifying, and Kate wants to stop it, but... Kara says no. Yep. It'll hurt her. Yep. I I, I say it was, no, and like again, this shows that Kate can actually fight. She put up a good fight up against Batman. I've been waiting to see that for a while. Now, granted, it is a Batman who is rusty yeah. and which is which, which is why I'm glad it was this Batman because she would not be able to take down peak Batman. No way in hell I could believe that. Oh, I don't even think that she could take down uh, Ian Glenn Batman. <laughs> Yo, Ian Glenn Batman should not be slept on, though. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, definitely not. Um, but yeah, no, like, she, she takes him down, and she, like, stashes away a little piece of kryptonite that she took from his suit. And just that's in case. one of the cliffhangers for the episode. Yeah. But... But when they get back, Kate's like, your thing messed up. Your machine messed up. That is not a pillar. No way. And Kate proved herself. Kate is the pillar of courage. And she is the bad of like, the future. And I like it because everyone, including her new BFF, Kara, 
It's like, yeah, makes sense. You deserve it. While Kate herself is just like, really? And see, this is this is what I this is what I like, right? So, um, and I might get a lot of heat for this, but a lot of the times when like people write female characters nowadays, they feel like they have to make the female characters super badass. They can do a lot of stuff. Otherwise, they're gonna they're they're gonna be like called out as being sexist because the woman is weak or whatever. No, I like that Kate has doubt. I like that Kate doesn't believe in herself. I like that Kate. Her skills aren't top notch because she can grow and get better. She's not a fucking Mary Sue who can just force push her way and Jedi mind trick around everything, even though she has no training I'm... whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, uh, go back and uh, look at like Barry and Nora's first time out as the Flash. Yep. They like run into a truck of. Thank goodness, like, sheets. Yep. <laughs> but, but yeah, they're fumbling. I mean, remember Nora and the police cars? The police yep. cars? And, I, and I, I love that, like, this crossover has given the Batwoman writers and the Batwoman team so much stuff to build Kate's character off of. Because this is what they needed. This is the one thing I've been complaining about from Batwoman consistently, is that they don't give Kate any like opportunities to like grow from like she yeah. stuff stuff kind of just happens and she gets lucky she's been getting lucky for like six episodes also might i also point out that this is one of the first times that kate's ever had to fight an evil that wasn't her sister yep because most of the episodes alice is the villain yep Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Well, none of you guys will actually realize this because magic of editing. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, but we had a um, little bit of technical issues. It honestly wouldn't be a channel chasers without it. Yeah, it's kind of a tradition. So, you know what? Thank you, inaugural episode. You've just continued the tradition. Um, yep. But so, anyway... Essentially, yeah, essentially, left off. Uh, we're very happy uh, with, you know, how they build up Kate with the end of her part, you know, with her role as the Paragon. And now we can officially move into part Although three. Although I will, I will say that I don't know how they would have done it, but just because of my bias of the characters, I would have liked to have seen at least a cameo from Alice and Mary. Especially Mary. Mary, Mary Mary's the best. <laughs> We did. We did get a. Uh, we did get a photo cameo from. Yeah, Alice. The other, yeah, the other Earth Alice. Yeah, the Earth ninety nine Alice. Which, by the way, the first time I've seen Kara with sticky fingers. Yeah, that was nice. Good, good move there, Kara. Good move. Yeah, she stole a picture of. And so, and, oh, in, in case some of you guys are, like, noticing, the reason I say Kara is because every cartoon I had heard prior to Supergirl, the TV show, has called her Kara. So I'm always going to call her Kara. Not as called Kara because I've gotten used to it because of the show. Yeah, I've just kind of become a stickler with that kind of thing, especially being raised by a Superman fan. You get corrected about this shit all the time. Well, I mean, also, I don't want to bring up a certain runaway, because that'll get you started. Listen, man. <laughs> that one triggers me. That one triggers me, because that messes up the reference entirely. Um, uh, but, yeah. So, on to the big part. Part three. Holy crap. Yeah, because uh, part two, we really didn't have... a too much of a cliffhanger. Yep. Uh, so, part three... They saved we, all that for part three. Yep, part three, <laughs> we uh, get Team Iris, which is Iris, I believe, um, Iris, uh, is it Lois? Lo no, Lois isn't with them. It's Iris, um, Ray, uh, Ralph. 
It's Iris Ray and Ralph. Yeah, but yep. it's before then we get confirmation of two more pillars. Yep. The pillar of love, Barry. Yep. And the pillar of peace. Humanity. No. Oh yeah, peace. Yeah, John Jones. Yep. And I love it. Carl's like, makes sense. And then we get the pillar of humanity. Ryan Joy. Uh which uh which I thought was awesome. That's a nice way to introduce him. Also played by Kevin Tran. Kudos to Space Dad for getting Paragon status. We love you, Space Dad. Yep. Which that also kind of proves why Mon- why uh, Monitor was so hard on him. Yeah, because he had an extra crisis. yeah, he had an extra role to play. Uh so um let's so Iris and Ralph and um Iris, Ralph and uh Ray, Ray uh go to Ivy Town because Ivy Town Fun fact, and Ray even mentions this, was the school that Ray taught at prior to like starting Palmer Tech. Yep. And um, Ralph's like, that used to be my old haunting joint. I yeah, know the yeah, place. Yeah, Ray yeah, Ray's like, Yeah, this used to be my my old stomach grounds. Yeah, I used to go here and I used to teach here. So that was cool. Well, um Ralph and Ray were like, I used to be there. Yeah. So that's yeah. why Ralph went. Yep, so Ralph is, yeah, Ralph clearly partied there while Ray taught classes. Um, yeah. And also, just side note, real quick, loved Ralph's reaction to meeting everybody, and he's like, oh my gosh. And He's uh, like, Katie's holy like, all-star squadron. And Katie's, all, Katie's just like, ignore him. This is his first crossover. Frost, gotta love Frost. Oh, oh man. She's great. Uh, but anyway, uh, so Ryan, uh, of course, seeing his hero fanboys out. And it's like, Dr. Palmer. Palmer. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, and he starts talking about his different papers and stuff. And Ray, he's like so shocked because no one ever appreciates Ray's intelligence <laughs> on um, Legends. Yeah, which is why he's so, he was so, we didn't mention it before, but why he was so happy when Brandy was like, finally, somebody. Somebody who speaks my language. <laughs> yeah, but also just real quick, I know we go into a lot of side tangents, but I have to point this out. Did you notice what Ryan said that his field was? Um, miniaturization. Mini- miniaturization, yeah. Yep. So. So we know, well, his, yeah. yeah, it was a hint at his future as the next Adam, which makes sense. Like Brandon's leaving, and uh, you know they're introducing Ryan, so it makes sense, like thematically that he's leaving also. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. I want. Although to, I have I, a feeling that next time we'll we see him, will be in uh, season five B of Legends. Yep. So that's going to be cool. Um, also, just another fun thing about Ryan. Ryan Choi, the character, was actually created by Grant Morrison and Gail Simone. And Ryan, in the show, has a daughter named Simone. Mm-hmm. He's so, married and has a wife. Yeah, that's cool. Which, and it's also more understandable when they come to him and say, Mr. Choi... The world's ending. He's like, okay, then I want to go spit it with my yeah. wife and daughter. His, lit- his literal response is, fuck this shit, I'm out. And he's like, I want to be with my wife and kid if the world's Which really ending. Totally understandable. And he has the most reasonable reaction to all this. And which is why, again, this is just Candace like, really putting in work. It makes perfect sense for somebody like Iris someone who understands the human aspect of all this to be able to convince Ryan, like, look, you know, we all have our parts to play and you have a very important one. We need you. Please help us. And he, he, look, he looks at her hand and sees a ring and he's like, you have someone. What, do you want to spend what time you have left with them? Yep, and she explains, like, he's not like us. He rushes into battle, does all this stuff. But, you know, 
You're, but I know, and I know you're not like them. You're like me. You're human, but you also understand like the power that lies in being that as well. So, like, please help us. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't uh don't you want your don't you want to be able to tell your wife and daughter that when the world was ending, you were able to help stop it. And we flash back to a cute West Allen scene. Yeah, where Barry gives her the like the confidence boost. He's like, I know you can do it. If anyone can do it, it's definitely you. And thankfully, and... it was a it was a cute moment that did not include the words "We are the Flash." No, but it it looks like they've decided to replace "We are the Flash" with "Running Home to You," which I'm fine with because it's a reference to the musical episode, which is highly underrated, mm-hmm. by the way. People always hate on that Indeed. one. I, I I love it. I still love it. I, I've gone back and watched that several times. Same. It's awesome. Exactly. Um, um wish they but, gave Moss and Grant more up the time to sing. I mean, yeah. Uh but uh so back to back to this. Uh, I I thought it was awesome. I, I it was a real nice way to recruit Ryan. And then now mm-hmm. we get to the big, big part. So first off, um, we kind of saw part of this coming because we saw in all the, all the promo photos, what the hell? Carlos is back in costume. What's going on? Well, Monitor, being the dick that he is, does not want to respect Cisco's wishes about, you know, retiring the superpowers. And he's like, nope, Vibe has a role to play. Poof, there's your powers. Yeah, he's just literally like powers. Vibe lives again. And Cisco's just like, oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah. And and you can clearly tell, again, with face acting from Carlos, he's like, you know, I would say something and cause shit if this wasn't the literal end of the multiverse. Exactly. And I, but I, but I also loved the little banter between him and Frost, and Frost was just like, "Nice to have you back, vibe." He's just like, "Can we just get this shit over with?" Yeah. And like, so essentially, this is where like the whole first half of Flash pays off because Nash's dig site um, is actually where we find the source of the antimatter wave, and. Nash and we, obviously and can't we, help us. Yeah, um, I was just gonna say Nash can't obviously can't help us because Nash was converted into Pariah. But Pariah is like, hey, you got your powers back. There's a way I can help you without helping you if you catch my drift. And mm-hmm. he's like, oh, I got to vibe your memories. And he's like, bet I got it. And so, which we also find out that this is the. This is like the anti monitors, like home slash, like cave. Yeah, and that, and that Nash let him loose. Yep. That that like end of the thing that we saw at the end of all the episodes was Nash letting the anti monitor free. Yeah, he thought. Kinda... He, he, yeah, he thought he was going to kill the anti monitor, but he actually let him out. <laughs> no. He was he was sent there because he was going to kill the anti monitor, but then quote unquote the anti monitor saved his life, which uh, really just which was really just Barry and uh, what's her name the new girl, yeah, uh, ultraviolet that stopped Allegra, the, yeah, Allegra that stopped the zombies from coming after her. But of course, the anti monitor, being the dick that he is, like his brother. He took credit for it, and he's like, oh, you saved me. I will serve you now. Yep. And so, uh, once they get in, they see the antimatter cannon, and so, of course, Barry's like, alright, I gotta stop it. And then he sees, like, there's a treadmill with a blur on it, and obviously they put two and two together, and we remember that we saw at the end of uh, Elseworlds uh, OG 90s Flash and OG 90s Green Arrow were trying to battle the anti-monitor at the end, or the monitor at the end, and the monitor poofed them away. Uh, 
but we didn't know what happened in the 90s Flash. Well, now yeah. we know. Um, well, yeah, because uh, they see the blur, and of course, Barry's like, I'm going to go stop it. And then uh, as he's in his super speed, he sees who the blur is, and it's 90s Flash. And Nash tells them what had happened. That yep. that monitor had just sent him off to a random Earth, and Anti Monitor took advantage of it. Yep. Yeah, he intercepted that the, the like the teleportation and like hijacked him, and now he's using ninety slash as a battery, and so uh, basically, uh, Cisco creates a breach to help help ninety slash off of the treadmill, and uh, you know John Wesley Ship is like, thanks, kid. But you got to get me back on there, because if I stop running on there long enough, the thing is going to accelerate and just instantly destroy everything. We need to, we need to stop it. We need to, I need to keep going. And so, and we see it start to explode and expel lightning. Yep. And so, and then walk from behind it well, randomly. Well, actually, no, it wasn't like it wasn't random. Well, first, it was like, well, we need to find a way to stop it. We need to find a way to overload it somehow. And then Pariah gets an idea. He disappears. And then he brings in Jefferson Pierce. Yup. Who, who, uh, just to let you guys know, for those yeah, who might yeah. not be keeping up with Black Lightning. The la- yeah, the, the last episode at the very end, he sees his Earth get Thanos snapped, including the his Black Matter, including his girls and Lynn and Gamby and everybody he knows and loves and holds dear. His entire Earth got Thanos snapped by antimatter. Um, yep, and so he uh, he's a yeah. little he's yeah, he a gets, little aggressive. Yeah, when he gets pulled out of it, he's on edge and he's like, "What the fuck did you do?" Where are my girls? And he like you know Nash tries to and explain, Frost or Frost I guess, is like Frost cool is it. like calm He's like, down, Mister Electric. Like, <laughs> cool it, Electric guy. And I'm just like he's like call him Electric guy. And he's like names Black Lightning, and he zaps, and yeah. then him and Barry have like meeting electricity blasts. Yep, which is and cool. Nash is like Nash is like calm down, everyone. This is Jefferson what Pierce, edu- he, and he, gi- he gives everybody, like, the quick rundown. Jefferson Pierce, educator, father, hero, uh, we need your help. And he's like, no, send me back to my girls, get me back to my, my world, what just happened? He goes, they're all gone, but look, we need your help. And Barry, being a dad who, you know, just, re- who relatively recently lost his daughter, he knows that pain. So he like reaches out to bear uh, to you know Jeff, father to father, and is like, "All right, look, you know I understand you're going through a lot right now, but every Earth is about to die, so I'm sure your girls would want you to save as many people as you can, right? Well, this is how you can do it." And so Jeff over tries to overload the machine. Meanwhile, like. 90s Flash and Barry, or 90s Barry and current Barry, like you know our Barry. Well, well, yeah. First of all, though, remember OG, OG Team Flash has goodbyes. Yep. Yeah, because the, the, they're pretty sure this is the moment mm-hmm. where Barry has to sacrifice himself, and where he disappears in a flash, and so Frost yeah, but- even lets Katie take back over. Yeah, because yeah, because you know Katie is the OG team member. Uh, but then before Barry gets a chance to do it, oh, um, you know, '90s Barry initiates a speed bubble conversation, and Barry and you know our Barry is like, "What the hell are you doing, man? Every second we waste in here is another second that an Earth could be gone, and another second that that wave could get closer to my wife. I need to hurry up and do this." And then '90s Barry is like, "Nah, fam." You don't understand. It's like, sorry, kid. I I got to do that. I've got to do this. And he goes, "What do you mean?" And he starts to. He does the classic, classic 
flash maneuver of stealing another flash's speed or temporarily borrowing a flash of speed to supercharge himself. And, and I to love... also make sure that Barry can't. Yep, can't stop oh. him. Um, and I, I love this move. It's it's almost like if, uh, just that kind of call back to Dragon Ball a little bit. It reminds me of like Majin Vegeta when he knocks out like Goku and then he knocks out Trunks and Goten before he goes to like blow himself up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but like, yeah, he he goes, he goes. Barry Allen has to die in crisis. That's what the monitor said, right? He didn't say which one. And I was like, "Oh shit! They cheated the system." And then, and then, our Barry is like, "Cisco, stop him!" And I'm not Cisco... watching my dad. I'm not watching my dad die a second time. And then Cisco looks at him and repeats words that he told him earlier yeah, in which is the so season. good. Which is so good because, like, you know, like. Cisco's hesitating for a little bit, and then, like, you know, 90s Barry looks at Cisco and is like, Do you want your friend to die? Let me do and this, then, please. And then Cisco is like, Barry. You made me, our... Barry, you made me team leader. And you said, and, you know, and sometimes when you're team leader, you've got to make the hard choices. And you're like, No. And he opens the breach, lets 90s Barry in there. And this is probably one of my favorite cameos because I love the 90s Flash show. Uh, we actually get to see Barry and Kit. That's right, folks. Kit. Her name was not Iris in the show. Um, but she was also a reporter. Uh, so, basically the same. And but they have... We get, we get to see original... Not original West Allen, but... Kit Allen, I guess you could say. Yep. Which is nice and sweet. Until the god-awful moment. Horrifying. That was terrifying. (laughs) He got completely like... It was like a Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good times like 100. Yeah, it was like the Speed Force shredded him alive. Yeah, because you hear, because like, man, they they did a really good job on that scene. Because you not only you hear him scream the whole time, but you just see him get ripped apart piece by piece, and there is literally nothing left but his emblem. Yep. Oh, before you, before that though, we do get to see like a small circle of his face screaming. Yep, <laughs> which definitely isn't terrifying or traumatizing. No, not at all. <laughs> Poor Barry, man. <laughs> he's, had to, he's had to watch his dad die twice. And his mom die several times, but still. Well, uh, then we kind of, I hate to say it, reach one part that kind of, like, peed me a little. Mm-hmm. Uh, Barry goes, our Barry goes back and meets back up with Iris. And he says, see, I told you I'd always... Come running back to you. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. Why are you so happy? Your dad just died. And it's like, you didn't know that you were going to come back. You didn't know that. For a second ago, you were like, I'm about to die now, guys. Peace, fam. This is it. (sighs) Yep. (sighs) God damn it, Barry. There it is, folks. You knew that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. There's always if you're a long time <laughs> follower of Jay and or Channel Chasers. There's always gonna be at least one. And that was definitely my one. I, I didn't say it the entire crossover until that moment. Yep. But, but um it also leads yeah. into a really good moment. Like after that, the, they follow up that kind of meh moment. With a really good one, where he pull, where Barry pulls Jeff aside, thanks Jeff for his contribution, and essentially it boils. Da- they have a conversation that boils down to basically, Daddy didn't raise no bitch. Mm-hmm. So and it's like both fun. of our dads died. I know where you've been. We need to, we need to cut the shit and be heroes. 
Yeah, basically, daddy didn't raise no bitch. Yeah. So, I like that. I like that a lot. I like that they dad bonded. They're orphan bros now. Like, all the DC, all major DC superheroes and, are orphan bros. And you know, and you know what's one thing that I constantly always forget? What? How messed up Barry's origins actually is. Yeah, right? Because you saw Jeff's reaction. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah my, my, my dad was in jail most of my life for the murder of my mom, which actually one of my enemies actually did. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. And then the look on Jeff's face, like, what the f***? Right? He goes, I was, my dad was just murdered by an alb- albino gangster man. But to be fair, the known gangster is still alive in my mortal end. Yep. But, uh, yeah. So, that was a cool moment. Uh, so, then we kind of lead to the escalation, what the fuck parts. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, because we think oh. we think that Ryan shows up with the team. Uh, we've got everyone. Barry, oh, our Barry, we, we, we skipped we skipped one part before that. We skipped one part before that. This is when Earth six 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 comes into play, and we get John yeah. and his meeting with my boy, the man, the myth, the legend, the angel. Lucifer Morningstar. And that was amazing. Their interactions were like just straight out of the comics, right to the fact that Lucy calls him Constantine. Um, which is yeah. fantastic. Because they go to him because since all the multiverses are ending, it's messing with John's magic. Yep. So he can't bring back Oliver properly. Mm-hmm. Like he did Sarah. Yep. So he and, needs a little oomph, a little extra help to get to purgatory. And so he goes to Lucy, who owes him a favor, because of course he does. Um, a, and, a favor involving May. Yep. So I, I'm going to take a guess at that, because in the comics, right, Maze was involved, not directly, uh, but, like, she had a hand in the whole Astrid thing. And John was going to kill her. But Lucy was like, no, that's my friend. She might have gotten mixed up in this, but it wasn't her fault. So he spared her life. So that was the favor that I'm guessing. And especially because Astrid is a big part of the Legend season. I'm definitely thinking that's what they're alluding to. Yeah, we're here. Uh, but, um, because it also was confirmed by Tom himself that uh, this scene takes place before Chloe. Yep. Yeah, of course, so. because he, he's, with, he's with two random broads. Um, also, one of my favorite things, he pulls the desire trick on uh, Mia, and of mm-hmm. course he he has the most Lucifer response ever. Ooh, daddy issues. Why didn't you say so? Yep. Yeah. Also, fun fact: um, when they do that sweeping shot of um, Earth six six six, not only do you see the sign for Lux, but you also see a billboard. That is a uh, Watchmen reference. Yep. So also, uh, one of the fun things is Lucy comments, and he th- he he thinks Dig reminds him a lot of Amenadiel, which you know, same a very similar personality. Well, um, he's he's like he's like tall, dark, hates me. Yep, you're my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so um, he uh. He gives John a card that allows them entrance into purgatory, but once the Which devil I just, image... I just love that, though, because he just gives him a card and leaves, and Mia's like, what? He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't even tell us how to do it, and John's like, ah, uh, don't worry about it. I've dealt with him enough. I know how this works. He's like, oh, did he? Brings out the card. Yep. And they get teleported to purgatory. 
Which, which course, of course all of is purgatory. Is literal purgatory. <laughs> yep, and because um, this is because they had to go across dimensions, Oliver doesn't know his memories at first. Well, it's not just that. It's also just whenever a soul hits purgatory, their memories are wiped. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, so they have to, like, restore Oliver's memories. Obviously, John helps get the memories back. They have a bro hug. He apologizes for not being there for Oliver when he died. You know, he gets... The- he has a nice moment with Mia. Yeah, he gets a reunion hug with Mia. And John's like, you know, no, no, we got, we, you know, we got a clock here, guys. We need to go now. And then... And then... The, and the, the coolest part fucking happens, okay? Ah, uh, dude, um... Before you say it, not same actor. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. That's fine. But the coolest part fucking happens because, like... Okay, I'm a huge fan of the Constantine show. Absolutely loved it. It was one of my favorite shows when it came out. And I reviewed every single episode... And I was severely disappointed when it got canceled. Um, and this is the part I alluded to earlier in the episode that I did not think they were they were actually going to do. And if they were going to do it, I didn't think they could actually pull it off. But they fucking did it. So Jim Corrigan shows up, like Brian said, not the same actor, but Jim Corrigan, who we saw become the Spectre at the end of Constantine shows up as the Spectre, and he goes... And Constantine even Queen. says, says yeah. not the Jim Corrigan that I know, okay? Yep. Yep. Yeah, but... And uh, so Jim Corrigan goes, Oliver Queen, you're next. The mantle of the Spectre must be yours. So... Let me break it down for y'all, for anyone who is not aware of, like, the DC hierarchy of, like, angelic beings, right? So, you've got the one above all, or, that, well, that's Marvel, my bad, not the one above all. Uh, you've got, you know, the voice, which is God, right? The voice, and then you've got the archangels, Michael, Lucy, Amenadiel, all of them, right? And then you've got the Phantom Stranger, Judas Iscariot, you've got, and and you've got one other person who is the Spectre, who is literally God's agent of vengeance and divine retribution, a.k.a. the person God calls to go after people who have failed their promises. And bar- and duties, and maybe even their cities. Uh huh. And also, you notice something. What he says, Oliver's catchphrase become someone else. Yep, something, something else. I thought that was awesome. Loved that. Um, so, you know, I'm a big Green Arrow fan. I remember when he became the Spectre in the comics. I thought in the comics it was kind of dumb, because Oliver Queen in the comics is this, like, jovial, funny, like, man of the people, small guy. He's not this big picture, agent of vengeance, Batman-esque character. But you know who is an agent of vengeance, Batman-esque character? Arrowverse Oliver. This mm-hmm. is fucking perfect. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, t- bigger picture, what this means is Steven is done with Arrow. Arrow's done. It's over. But because Steven has a p- position in the Arrowverse hierarchy now, with mm-hmm. not even Arrowverse, multiverse hierarchy, because the Phantom Stranger or the, the Spectre exists. Outside of space and time, across the entire multiverse, um, Oliver can appear any time in any show. Can... So that's going to be 
fucking awesome. So that means we could hear him in the future, in the spinoff, in Legends, in any show. And quite possibly. Also, and also in future crossovers. This is going to be awesome. This is the, probably this is this is the moment right here where I was like, okay, this made the crossover for me. Holy shit! Yeah, because like you know, because I talked about it before. I thought Oliver's death was pretty dirty, but once they did this, yeah. I was like, okay, you are forgiven. And Historical. also, one other thing that this means means that Oliver can appear in the other two parts of the crossover. Yep, and he is, because we saw in the promo, when uh, Barry's in the Speed Force, Oliver, he's like, Oliver? He hears Oliver's voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, they have, they have confirmed that uh, part, whatever part is the Legends, I believe that's part four. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, a good focus is going to be on, like, Sarah and Sarah coming to terms with this. Yep. Also, um, you know, Oliver already wears a hood all the time, so, like, his Spectre costume is about to look dope. Mm Mm-hmm. I really hope we get to see him in full-ass costume with the energy tendrils and everything, and with, like, Legends being so magic-y right now, like, it's the perfect mm-hmm. place to introduce, like, full-on Spectre Oliver. But I do have a feeling, though, that it's going to be kind of like, uh, honestly, Lucifer, where it only comes out, like, when he's, like... Oh, yeah, when, yeah, 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 when, he, when he's, like, yeah, when he, like, is, like, emotionally triggered. Um, and he's going to be, like, regular Oliver most of the other time. But still, I want at least one moment where we, like, get to see, like, the green flames of vengeance, like, coming off of him and shit. So, it so cool. Mm. Oh, man. That was awesome. Okay. So, now, we, now that we've covered that part, let's talk about, like, they, the big... They get back after that because mm. Oliver says yes. So, Jim Corgan just, like, flashes them back to the... Out of purgatory. Yep. And they get back to the ship and they're like, okay, we didn't save Oliver, but we now have all the paragons. We're we're looking pretty good. We're gonna be on the right track. And then, then Dig, and then Diggs like, where's my wife though? Uh where's Lilo? We gotta find Lila. And, then, and like, right on key. Lila shows up and then you know she hugs John. But then, you know, something feels fishy. It's just like, wait a minute. She's been gone this whole time. And you and... think... And she's like, and, and it's like, and you said, Monitor, that you think she could have been corrupted by the anti-Monitor. So, what and if... And Pariah, you said... You were here to witness... We... You were here to witness a great tragedy. And Cisco... In that moment, Cisco puts it together like, wait a minute. Well, Sis- I, I love it. I love it because it's it's Cisco and Kingdom Come Superman who put it together. Yep. It, they literally pull an Admiral Akbar. And they're like, it's oh. Crap. Sh-. They're, without saying it, they're like, oh, shit. And then Lila goes wide-eyed. And then she has the echoing anti mon and then kicks an- the crap out of John. Yep. John. And then and then anti monitor and uh, monitor have a kamehameha beam struggle for some reason. Um, and in your mind, you're like, "Oh crap! They're gonna kill the monitor." Yep. And, and they do. The, yep, he's gone. <laughs> Not and only then- is he gone, but then Harbinger. Like absorbs his power. Yep. And so now, the which I think monitor... that's why, that's why he she was able to do that final thing. Yep. And so now she's able to like uh, anti monitor is anti monitor harbinger is now like in control of all the Infinity Stones. Metaphorically speaking, and uses speaking. it to do a final little wave to get rid of the last Earth standing. 
However, Nash re- Nash slash Pariah realizes, okay, now I know what I have to do. And so... Because while- right as he was dying, Monitor looked at Nash and was like, it's time. there's going to be a time where you realize what you have to do. Yep. And now's that time. And so he teleports all the Paragons away. We don't know yet where, but, um, you know, I love that all our remaining heroes have full confidence in them. And it's like, you know what? It's okay if we're gone because they survive. They'll be here to fight. And they're, gonna, and they're not going to stop fighting. Not until their last breath. And I love that Superman and I like, got and the And I like how it's like a moment of a great, like, without even saying anything between Iris and Tyler. That is yep. Superman. Yep. I love that Superman got the last word also, by the way. That was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we cut. And so and, with that, a wave yeah. of antimatter wipes them all out. It's the whole damn ship, except for the seven paragons who have gone Lord knows they, where. Yep, and we find out where in a couple of seconds. Uh, and of course, uh, it ties directly into Legends, because Legends is the next part. They all are sent to the one place that I figured they were going to be sent to, because it exists outside of space and time. The mm-hmm. Vanishing Point. Mm-hmm. Former, former head office of the Time Bureau, where the finale of season one took place. Yep, where the, what was the original, it wasn't called the Time Bureau. What, Time Masters? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was the Time Lords, wasn't it? Masters, I think. Oh, yeah. It was something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. But anyway. Uh, like Rip Hunter's old organization before the Time Bureau, where the finale of season one took place. Yeah. Um, so, and we actually still see the wreckage from the season one finale. So that was cool. Mm-hmm. And of and course, we see there... all of our, and we see all of our heroes there. And Sarah realizes because Sarah was one of the Paragons. Mm-hmm. Uh. She realizes where they are and they're here. And... Time Masters, yeah, Time Masters. Yep, that's what it was called. But, yep. but yeah, so Sarah realizes what's going on, where they are. But and of and course, everyone Barry, is just. And, and of course, Barry's first reaction is the same as everybody else. He's like, "Shit, what happened? We gotta go back. We gotta go back." And I love that John being like goes instinctively into dad mode and is like, "No, Barry, calm down." We can't do that. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, like he's like, but does anybody know where the hell we are? And that's when Sarah is like, of course. He sent us to the vanishing point. It exists and outside like, of space okay, and time. This, what the fu- Everyone's gone. But at least we have some hope. It's and like, at, it's least over, right? super, at least we got two super... At least we have two super people. Right. 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 And, and, then, all, and then, and then, legit. All of a sudden, Cal Brain has an Superman. "I don't feel so good" moment. He literally has an "I don't feel so good" moment, and I was like, "Wait, where's that?" Like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a, like a reenactment of what I was going through at that moment. I was like, "What the fuck? <laughs> no, no." No, and then when we and find we, out who it we is, we see him and, fall over but, with antimatter coming off of him. Yeah, yeah, cr- uh, like crackling off of his chest. And of course, they they reverse, like they flip the uh, iconic image from Crisis, but this time it's Kara holding Clark. That was great. Love that. Yeah. Don't don't like and then, and then don't like that it happened, but I, I love that so much. Blowing antimatter and changing. Yep, and it forms into another person. And literally, as soon I knew what was gonna happen, I didn't want to believe it, but I knew what was gonna happen, and I was like, it better not be. 
it better not be. And then he shows up, and I'm just like, you motherfucker. And that's the cliffhanger. Flex fucking Luther. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what pisses me off? You know what pisses me off? Like, even more. This is just kind of a small nitpick, and they di- I think they did this just on purpose to make it even more triggering. You know what pisses me off? What? He was able to do that with a fucking Sharpie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? And you know what also that goes to show, though? What? Just how smart and resourceful Lex is. Because that proves that that before they could uh, capture him, he stole one of the pages. Yep. And a Sharpie. Yep. And he crossed out Superman's name because of course he fucking did. And, re- and wrote his name over it. This fucking piece of shit. And I love it. He's like, wow! Did think that actually work? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that, that's, that's kind of the best and the worst part. He goes, wait, that worked? Hey! Mm-hmm. And he's just like, hey, so what are we doing, guys? <laughs> oh my god. Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck mm-hmm. him. This, is, this isn't monetized. I can say it all I want. Fuck him. You need. Yo, I was so mad. <laughs> I'm getting mad just thinking about. Indeed, but that's our that's our cliffhanger, people. And also, we find out that um, we didn't mention this before, but it is of note that uh, this is similar but different to the comics. Because if I'm not mistaken, in the comics, didn't the inner monitor just want to get rid of everything? No. Well. No, the in in the comics, the Anti Monitor wanted to remake the universe as an anti um, anti matter universe, like he di- like he did in this. Yeah, so that's so. Now we've got our seven Paragons mm-hmm. and Lex. Yep, and <sighs> hopefully, gladly. Spectre Oliver. Yep. And all, but I mean, on the bright side, like, at least they replaced Superman with a genius. Yeah. It could have been worse. It could have been. And look, I don't want people to think I hate the character because I talked about her earlier. I love her. It could have been worse. It could have been Iris. <laughs> what is Iris going to do? No. Like, but for real though, like, at least they got somebody like super I, smart. I'll tell you what could have been worse. What? If it was just like randomly, uh. The love interest on Batwoman. Oh, fucking Sophie. <laughs> no! Yeah. Oh. That would have been horrible. Not just because I don't like Sophie. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, so it looks like they're going to be in the antimatter universe. Yep. So, which I wonder, it, does that mean that we're going to get, like, antimatter versions of people? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, they, they started to do that in, um, in, like, like, the crisis comics and like that's technically like how the crime syndicate earth existed post crisis because it was a remnant you know of the otherwise universe. I'm wondering how they're gonna how they're gonna involve the other cast members mm-hmm. that's probably what, that's most I don't I'll think see. they're gonna I don't think they're gonna do that entirely because they kind of already did that with uh Earth X or yeah, Earth X. I get you, but also, um, quick little theory because I think now we're getting into. Yeah, obviously. 
um, I think that maybe they might go the way of saying that if the legends were in the time stream while it happened, mm-hmm. that they avoided it. Yep. And so the legends team is going to finally come and help. Yep, that's what I'm. I'm thinking is going to happen. Um, so in terms of let's talk overall speculation now. So. Um, Brian disagrees with me on this one, but personally, I still think that this is going to end with um, the Earth's um, uh, basically kind of the same the same outcome as original like Comet Crisis, where like the Earth will merge into like Earth Prime or whatever, and so that way uh, we'll have that like just one cohesive Earth. And not have to deal with that. Now, like, I know, like, logis- that doesn't necessarily mean that Black Lightning and Supergirl are always going to interact. Because, and- like, they're going to still do their own thing. But it makes, like, having the crossovers make more sense. And you don't have to jump through all the hoops and do all the confusing multiverse BS anymore. Um, and also, because I think, and this kind of ties into my uh, like speculation uh but they're starting to air star girl on both dc universe and um the cw as a marketing thing but also i think you know merging the earths and kind of like getting a redo on the justice society is definitely what we need uh no offense to that regardless but like actually I think this is pretty kind of apropos and all that, but a lot of speculation has come around that because the the HBO Max is doing a um, HBO Max is doing a um, The Green Lantern show? Yeah, that they're gonna not go ahead with the dig Green Lantern thing. Yep. So if that is the case, then that will mean that the first TV Green Lantern live action we ever get will be the OG. Yep. Hal Jordan. No. Alan Scott. Alan Scott. Oh, as in, oh, you mean OG OG. Okay. Because he's confirmed for Stargirl. Oh, yeah, that's right. Which makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's I think it's really cool. I personally, I just think that's a possibility uh, because, like, my my thing is uh, just so we're clarifying. My viewpoint is not that that they're just going to leave it and the multiverse the exact same. No, what I think they're going to do is they're going to instead of it being like fifty three, it's going to be like five. See, I I could see that too, um, but I could also see, like, how they could incorporate this into the other arts, right? So, we've seen, and I, I'm like, I'm not gonna go too deep into it because it, that could be like a whole video onto itself. Uh, but we've seen that, like, if we once we've seen one like crisis and in the comics that like the history of the entire multiverse is rewritten, right? You know, like different bits and pieces and stuff. So, uh, for example, Titans, right? We see at the end of Season 2, and spoiler for Titans Season 2 if you haven't seen it, um, but we see that Dick Grayson has taken over as Nightwing, right? Like, he's finally taken up the mantle. So, the, like, around, like, around this time when he first takes up the mantle in the comics is actually or also around the same time that Bruce disip- like goes off and like you know does the whole post nightfall thing, which is also the kind of the plot line they're hinting at that Kate's Bruce did. So I'm thinking that Ian Glenn Bruce is gonna disappear for a bit. Maybe if they do this whole one Earth thing, and Ian Glenn Bruce is definitely old enough to have had a kid, who we more than likely see being taken in 
my title, Superman. Um, since we know uh, that Super Sun is going to be a thing. There's just one issue. Oh, yeah? Um, with the whole Bruce thing. Mm-hmm. When they go to Earth, when they go to Earth 99, mm-hmm. Kate is visibly shocked with how, and says it, with how old Bruce is. I mean, Bruce was in his like twenties when she was twelve. He would he'd be old now, unless they're not mm-hmm. paying attention to their timeline. Kevin Conroy is sixty four. I mean, well, no, I mean, I know, like, but I mean, Ian Glenn Bruce, he wasn't sixty four. He was like in his like early fifties, late forties. Late fifties. Um, I mean. The the way the that fifty eight, uh, yeah, he the actor is fifty eight, but like the the way the char- the way the character himself was portrayed, he was like he looked early, he seemed like but, early fifties. Also, though, like, they they've said before that they imagine they can't ever show it, but they imagine that in this multiverse is the movies. Hmm. Uh, like I think they even said that there was a rumor going around. That um, that Zachary or uh, Momoa were gonna make a cameo. Oh, seriously? There were rumors of it going around. Man, that would have been cool to see Zach Levi Shazam. Um, even but... if it did, even if it was just like him flying through the red skies and getting yep. But, yeah, get, getting Thanos. No, I mean, okay, I definitely think your theory is also like, like definitely likely. And I'm not saying like the one Earth would like just. I'm, I'm, I'm saying the one Earth theory applies to like one Earth for the TV shows. Like, I know the movies are going to be their own thing. Like, that's see, obvious. The thing, the thing is that we're disagreeing. Is that you believe that that also includes the DC universe universe? I don't think so. Because I think that 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 also limits it so that now on Batwoman we can't ever have a Robin, a Red Hood, a Nightwing ever come in for a cameo. Yeah, okay, that's that's fair. But also post crisis they did kind of they did eventually just split into two earths so i definitely think it might just be like the arrowverse stuff and the dc universe stuff as yeah two- that's what i'm and the reason why i said five though is because like one for the arrowverse one for one for titans and like one for move one for animated maybe Okay, yeah, that's fair. Um, because like I definitely think by the end of this, all the Arrowverse shows will end up being taking place on the same Earth. Yeah, and I and think that, that and I want to include Lucifer into that, like that little ball, even though Lucifer is ending with the next season. And I think that um that also includes Black Lightning. Obviously, even though oh. uh, did you ever finish watch that whole episode? Um, no, I only watched like the. I only saw like that last part, like I said. Or... Well, do you mind if I spoil something for you? Go ahead. Go ahead. And this is a spoiler for everyone about the mid-season finale of season three of Black Lightning. In it, we actually do get to see the Pierce family of Earth 1 and Earth 2. Oh, really? Yeah, in, in Earth 1... The in Earth One, uh, uh, Nissa doesn't have any powers mm-hmm. and is still in the closet. Oh, snap! Uh, the only person that knows is Jen. Okay, uh, Jen actually was smart enough that she came, she actually created a cure for green light metas. And gave it to everyone, and she's like the only one that has powers. So Jen's the one that made the cure, not Lynn. Interesting. 
And uh, she, um, Jen ran, went around as a hero, so the ASA put cuffs on her and put her in prison. Oh, snap. And she she's supposed to be like, um, they did a whole thing where they did uh, Jen coming in contact with her Earth 1 and Earth 2. And they were like, um, one was if she went like, too far to being goody and not ever doing anything. And that was that, Earth that, 1. Mm -hmm. And then Earth 2 was uh, what would happen if she like went to full-on Adele and went uh, Agent Adele and went full-on like working for him killing, went full dark villain. Oh, um, snap. She she actually, by the end of the episode, kills their universe's Lynn, uh, their universe's Anissa, and their universe's Jeff. And that's Earth 2? Yes. Dang. And Earth 1 was just a good guy that gets put into prison? Overly two-shoes good guy. Um, but Jeff and Jeff was, I believe, cured. And had no powers. Interesting. So, That's... oh, and also, the last we see of him, mm -hmm. Odell kills him. Oh, damn. So. Oh, uh, side note, we didn't mention it, but I love that, like, Jeff, like, has a reaction to super those super people. Mm -hmm. He's like, holy shit, the whole Superman thing? It was real this whole time? Mm-hmm. Uh, because, fun fact for you guys, Jefferson Pierce, Black Lightning, is actually a Superman character. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually yeah. is not from Freeland. He is nope. from Metropolis. He, mm -hmm. was born in the, he was born and raised in the suicide slums, and he was the protector of the suicide slums. The, basically, predominant, um, the, basically the black kinda, neighborhood of Metropolis that Superman... He was basically kind of like TV show Roy Harper. Yep. Yeah, base. Yeah, because it's basically yeah, because the Suicide Slums are basically the glades of Metropolis, and Superman the wasn't allowed. The Star yeah. City. Yeah, the Superman. Superman wasn't really allowed in there. Uh, so, so Jeff, you know, stepped up. And also, fun fact for you guys, uh, Jefferson Pierce was actually appointed as Secretary of Education by President Lex Luthor comic and he was uh the uh head of checkmate oh also uh just heads up in the um earth one version i believe he had that political standpoint oh he was the secretary of education he he, he was some big politician nice. but the reason why agent odell killed him was because uh he, along with the pastor, were smuggling out metas out of Freeland. Interesting, uh, but yeah, I, I'm gonna. I I definitely think that's how it's gonna end. Is at least at the very least, the Arrowverse stuff is all gonna condense into one Earth. And just one other thing that we have to mention because we're going on for long. Yep. But uh, the super theory. Oh yeah, I'll let you take this one. Because I, I spoke for most of the like the multiverse like condensing. So, yeah, we knew that Superman and Lois were getting their own spinoff post crisis, and Argo City basically confirmed that it's going to be on Earth. Well, then a report came out saying that somehow they were going to address. Super Sons, and they were going to be a part of the show. Yep, which, you know, uh, confirms a rumor that came out very early on in Crisis that John was going to get aged up by the end. Well, also, I don't know if you've heard this, Jay, but that's been doubly confirmed now where a casting call for... And it kind of confirms my theory, too. A casting call has gone out for two teenage boy actors 
for yep. Superman and Lois TV show. Yep. So this, yeah. So our theory that we came up with together was, uh, and I'll let Brian continue. Theory is that um, Batman's missing in this universe. And Kate really doesn't seem like the motherly type. So we know that we know that Bruce has a son, Damien. Yep. So what if his super best friend is the one who looks over him? Yep. And he's going to be a better person. And also, we know that on Kara's Earth, and like we talked about before, that Bruce and Clark are best friends. Um, yeah. So since the Earths are merging, I'm assuming that part of their like history will also merge. Yeah. And, yeah. The one person that you know Bruce would trust with his kid outside of his family would be Clark Kent. Also, um, one of the things that makes that honestly does make uh, Tyler and Betsy so good is that uh, they are like pillars of hope and like very nice characters. So it's like, how can you spice that up? Yeah. Well, wh- why not uh, add DC's resident little asshole? Yeah, someone who was raised by assassins his entire life. And that could also reincorporate Arrowverse Talia. Maybe, yeah. Because think about it, it, right? And could also tie into the whole thing of Talia. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if you've... Yeah, yeah, Talia's been confirmed the Arrow spinoff. Well, it's Talia and Thea have been Creating the Legion of Superheroes. The, the Le- yeah, yeah, the League of Superheroes. Yeah. Is it Talia or is it Nissa? It was Talia. Oh yeah, it was Talia because Nissa wasn't there. Yeah. Nith- Nissa was off doing some Legion stuff, presumably in Hawaii. If you catch my drift. Yeah. Gotcha. Because um, the actress. Yep. Um, but yeah, so uh I yeah, we definitely think that's gonna be the case where like uh Clark and Lois take in Damien. I actually looked it up. Um the casting call calls for uh the official casting call calls for two characters that they're nicknaming Matthew and Ethan. Matthew is a modest, kind-hearted, a three-sport athlete who's already garnering attention from college and pro scouts. Come on. That's definitely John. And then Ethan. Ethan is a young Leonardo DiCaprio who is an inherent who has an inherent darkness to him. Ethan's wildly intelligent, but his his mercutial temperament and social anxiety limit his interactions with people and cons and Oh, they're not even they're not even they're not even trying most of his time playing video games. They're not even trying. Yup. They're, they're not even trying. All they have to say is this kid has an affinity with animals? <laughs> and that's Damien. They already said video games, so. No, I know, but I know they said video games. But yeah, Damien's also a gamer, if you guys don't know that. Like, yeah. When, when Dick showed him Mortal Kombat, he, like, his mind was blown. Um, but, but a young Leo yeah. who's on, super ben. intelligent and lacks social skills has it. Has an obvious inner darkness. Oh, come on! <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. And also, and, 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 and also, very early on, just a side note, 
Uh, we didn't talk about this in the first part, but Clark and Lois actually have a line where he talks about how he actually saw them, you know, settling down back on Earth eventually uh, with two kids. Mm -hmm. And Lois is like, nice dream there, Smallville, but (laughs) the factory's closed. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, how does the saying go? Tell God your plans and see him laugh? Or, you know, to quote the great Dr. Ian Malcolm, life finds a way. Exactly. But anyway, we could go on other further details, but we could be here yeah. for hours. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, I already um, don't want to have to give Brian too much work in and I will this say, together. I'm going to say one other thing um, about part two, especially. Mm-hmm. Guggenheim has confirmed that he is still in talks to try to get more people for part two for cameos. Oh, oh yeah, the second half, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so we have reached that wonderful time um, of this very long inaugural podcast. We hope any of you members of the universe who have never checked out Channel Chaser before uh, enjoyed this. Um, And if you really, really enjoyed this, uh, you can actually get access to this a day before this goes up on the Comic Universe channel. If you click the link down below and go to my Patreon and donate as little as a dollar a month, you will get early access a full day ahead of everybody else. Now, granted, there are only three of them right now. uh, So thank you again, Jordan, DNGN, and what you're watching. You guys are great. You'll get access to this as soon as Brian's done editing. Uh, but for everybody else, uh, this will be going up a day after that. Uh, so if you want access to it, and you, you really enjoy hearing our ramblings and stuff, definitely chip into that Patreon. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, but now, we're into plug time. So what's coming up for your channel this upcoming holiday week, Brian? Well, uh... Due to the holidays, things are a little light. Because I will go ahead and say this now because for people that are watching who might not know because it's going on Comic Universe. Typically, I cover Batwoman, Supergirl, Arrow, uh... Black Lightning, Riverdale, Nancy Drew, Legacies, and High all of those the just went on. So, what's left is my Friday stuff, which is High School Musical, the musical, the series. HS and DMTS. I just love saying it in the long way. Oh, I do too. I've gotten used to it, but I've also gotten used to saying HS and DMTS. But also, Harley Quinn. Oh, yep. boy. No. It, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, now on to what Jay is covering. Now, I, so- will, I will try to maybe do something in the meantime, but and also I want to eventually before the a few lists, but I don't know about this week, so I'm I don't I wanted I had some big list ideas planned, but I have no time to put it together with everything that's going on in my house. Um but uh as far as stuff that I'm going to be uploading on to my Vlair, which you guys should definitely follow me on if you haven't already. I know Brian did a video on it on the channel uh, talking about it. And uh, thanks again, Brian, for that. Uh, but uh, awesome. as, far as, as, as far as stuff I'm covering uh, that is still going on, uh, I will be putting out a review of Rise of Skywalker next week because that's coming out. Very, very hesitantly excited. Uh, heard a couple rumors, and if those rumors are true... I will not have good things to say about this movie. Just saying. 
but I will pray as much as possible that those rumors aren't true. If they are, this next podcast is going to be a little rough. Let's just say, if it happens, just be glad <laughs> that this podcast isn't going to be monetized. Because... Well, um, we've boy. got one more... I know, but still. I, I, I know, but I'm just saying, the, 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 the one for Rise of Skywalker is going... If these rumors are true, it ain't going to be pretty. At least what I'm going to have to say about it. Brian's probably going to be nice, because Brian's just a nice person, but... Thanks for that, but also, you can tell, especially from us talking on Batwoman, I know how to shit talk, and I can shit talk. Oh, I know you can shit talk. I'm just saying, you're going to be a lot nicer about it than me, because I'm the I'm always the person to tear, tear a property a new asshole when it deserves to have their asshole torn. Um, Indeed. But uh, anyway, besides that, besides that, I will be doing... Also, HSM TMTS, or High School Musical, the musical, the series, uh, which is an amazing show that I Mm -hmm. have grown to love and enjoy and cherish. It is one of my favorites, honestly. One thing that I kind of forgot to mention in my my, uh, review is I love that they're adding not only shows that it's songs that aren't canon, but songs that aren't even for the musical. Yep. I love that. Um, so there's that. I also do The Mandalorian, which is wrapping up soon. Uh, next week's episode is actually coming out on, I think, on Wednesday. Uh, so I'll have that out. Um, I'm also doing reviews of Steven Universe Future, uh, which is a lot of fun. Um, and I think uh, a new show on USA is going to premiere that going to um, start reviewing called Dare Me because it looks like Euphoria mixed with Pretty Little Liars and Cheerleaders. I might try to cover that, but its timeline is very awkward for me. I feel you because you got school and you got work and stuff. Understandable. Um, It it all depends on like what day it comes out and all that. I might be able to cover the premiere. It's probably it's probably gonna be like Sundays at uh, Sundays at nine. The uh, the old or Sundays at Sundays at yeah. I think it's either Sundays at nine or Sundays at ten. The old Mister Robot slot because Mister Robot's ending. Speaking of which, I also will be covering Mister Robot. So I know what you're thinking, Jay. You just talked. About, you just listed like five or six shows. How is that light? Trust me, it's light. Oh, trust me. You know how I talked about how I have. A good chunk of my shows are on break. We'll at least double that, and that's all the shows that Jay has that have ended or on break. Oh, speak. Oh, I forgot one last show. His Dark Materials is ending in two weeks, and I'll be covering those last two episodes for season one. Uh, another amazing show um, that you know maybe if uh, I mean, oh, well, actually, the time frame doesn't add up, but. Maybe for season two we can cover eventually, but it's a it's a great show. Uh, it's already gotten renewed, so I don't even, I don't even have to worry about panicking if this show is going to get renewed. So super and excited maybe, to cover that. Maybe knock on wood, depending on how time goes, I could cover season two. Um, the main reason why I hadn't is because not only work but also Black Lightning comes on at the same time. Yeah, I actually dropped Black Lightning because I started covering it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been covering Black Lightning since the beginning. I mean, I have too, but also, like, it was kind of a combination of, like, covering his dark materials and my interest sort of waning towards the middle of the season. Like, it was starting to drop off for me, personally. But... I'm going to catch up, and I will definitely be covering the second half, because Mrs. Dark Materials will be over. Um, also, so. um, they have promised that every single one of the Arrowverse shows will be impacted by crisis. Yep. So. Yep, so I will definitely be covering the second half of uh, Black Lightning um, when it comes back. Uh, same for Supergirl. Again, the only reason I didn't cover the first half of Supergirl, because I have been watching, uh, is because Mr. Robot 
And uh, if you've ever seen Mr. Robot, you know for a fact you cannot miss the first 10 minutes because shit happens real quick. Oh, he he tried for one episode. And literally in the first 10 minutes, they killed off a main character. No joke. Not going to say who, obviously, but they killed off a main character. And I was like, oh, nope. Sorry, Supergirl. <laughs> nope, not doing that no more. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> but also That's fortunately, easy. yeah, yeah. Fortunately, but also fortunately, Mr. Robot will be over for good. Um, but, you know, looking forward to it nonetheless. I did have some lists planned out. I was going to do some big, like, heavily edited, like, of the decade TV show stuff. But I just don't have the time, and those are big projects. Because it's not just the top ten, it's of the decade. But, you know, mm-hmm. who, who knows? Maybe ten years later. Maybe in maybe in 2029. <laughs> Hopefully, Blair will be a lot bigger by then. Um, but we yeah. on YouTube will be back by then, so you can redirect them to join. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, we hope you enjoyed this long tangenty inaugural episode of Channel Chasers. Which, by uh, the way, just FYI, they're not usually this. Long. Yeah, they're really not. It's just, this is a massive event. We had a lot of, like, plot points to cover, and we wanted to be as thorough as possible without, like, focusing too hard on many details. Because, honestly, we could do whole podcasts on just little Easter eggs and episodes. Uh, like, of, mm-hmm. like, the different parts. I honestly originally was going to pitch the idea of doing, like, podcasts on, like, the individual parts, but then I was like, nah, why not just do all three? And that's why we got this super long version. Um, well, so, also because we have a lot of TV coming up that is going to be really good over mm-hmm. the break. Yep. So uh, we uh, thank you for like lasting this long. If you've watched all the way to the end, uh, and uh, as a reward, you get to know what's coming up next for us in terms of the uh, next episode of the podcast. So, Brian, what do the listeners have to look forward to? Well, a certain show that unfortunately was announced that it's going to be its last season, but if you know the show, you know that we're big fan. If you know the original show, you know that we're big fans of it. And especially, especially me, considering this particular show is based off of one of the first ever comic series that I read, like, ongoingly on my own as a kid. And has, like, arguably one of our favorite fictional ships in it. Both in TV and comics, mind you. So, So, we are about to... I wanted to make a joke about going on the road. Yeah, I was trying to make a pun, too. I guess I let that one... I guess I let that one run away with me. And as he just said, Runaways, season three. Yeah. Unfortunately, the final season, but oh boy, does it look like it's going to end on a bang. It really does. I'm, I'm only four episodes in as of recording this podcast, and it is like going nuts right now. Um, oh, I'm going to be re- uh, hopefully recording that one tomorrow night. Uh, that should be up tomorrow night on my Vlayer. So if you want to know my thoughts, the final season of uh, Runaways and all my Dina Rue feels, because there will be a lot of Dina Rue feels. Trust me, I could do a whole video just on Dina Rue feels. In fact, I did a whole video specifically on Dina Rue on Comic Universe. <laughs> so check that out if you're interested. But anyway, uh, we're ending it there. Yep, we'll see you guys later. Peace.